worship and bless him. Indeed, God is said to arise. Arise over my life. Arise over your life. Is someone blessing him? He is a God of signs and wonders, the Savior, the Redeemer. He is here to manifest his power, wisdom, grace. Thank him in advance to be an extraordinary night for your sake. Shabekato sabranda gabalako sabrehisiash. Everywhere within this auditorium, all the overflows connecting online, we're lifting up hands in praise to say thank you, Jesus. Thank him for the privilege to experience this moment of signs and wonders. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're still going to pray one prayer, Psalm 107, verse 31. Psalm 107, verse 31, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Can you turn this to be your prayer point? Father, thank you. Go ahead and thank him. Give him quality thanks. For January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and now November ending. Tell him thank you. It's only happened well for me because of your grace. It's only happened marvelous for me because of your mercy. Thank him for Koinonia, global impact, mighty manifestations of his grace from nation to nation, region to region, as a global family, let's tell him thank you. We are not ungrateful, not unmindful of his kindness. Savior, Redeemer, God of signs, God of wonders, God of healing, God of deliverance, the breaker, the opener of closed doors, the holder of the key of David, that opens a door that no man can shut, shuts a door that no man can open. We give you thanks. Now ask him to visit you tonight. Do something in my life, oh God, that becomes an evidence that I encountered you. Someone desperate, someone hungry, someone determined. Go ahead and pray. Arise in a way that becomes clear to all that I have experienced your power. Arise in a way that becomes a testament in my life that you are indeed strong and mighty over me. Ask him to arise. Ask him to arise as a God of signs, wonders, miracles. Let there be a performance in my life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Shout a believing amen. May my God surprise you tonight. May God write something upon your life that only he can write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Visit us, O God. Give us mighty and marvelous encounters tonight. And to you be all the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be gloriously seated. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I welcome you to a miracle service for the month of November. And this is the final miracle service for this year that God has declared as our year of open doors. We have seen his hand. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus with all my heart. I believe in his power and I believe in his grace. 
God has been faithful over our lives and tonight God will surprise someone in Jesus name very quickly my assignment tonight oh by the way I welcome everyone um, to God's glorious presence and that includes those who are worshiping with us for the first time I know that you were acknowledged but um, allow me um, add to that acknowledgement it's always an honor to have people come from across the globe um, particularly our international guests thank you so much for making the time to be here <laughs> hallelujah the Lord will do you good in the name of Jesus we have a lot to do tonight my assignment is to build faith um, and to inspire you as we prepare to see that which God has preordained for this night and you will not lose your portion in Jesus name I thought to bring as a guide to our minds and our understanding what to expect from a service like this you would be surprised that many believers come to the presence of God and they come for such a powerful service like this but if they are not taught and guided to know the things that are available and how to position your faith, it is possible that in the midst of the manifest presence and power of God, many people may walk out of this place, sadly, not receiving anything. And so I thought to dedicate tonight to charge our hearts. What exactly is a miracle service? I want you to listen very carefully because the real miracle starts when you understand what this is about i gave two definitions here and i want you to pay attention number one a miracle service is a moment dedicated by god to visit his people and to bring solutions to their concerns their fears and their troubles listen again every time in god's presence is truly a miracle service but there are moments where by his wisdom and his preordination, he dedicates moments where he comes to visit his people. So a miracle service is a moment dedicated by God to visit his people and not just to visit them, but to bring supernatural solutions to their concerns, their fears, and their troubles. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. The Bible says the Lord in the midst of thee. Not the Lord seated in heaven. Not the Lord somewhere. The Lord thy God who has come in the midst of thee is mighty. And because he has come in the midst of thee, he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So a miracle service is a moment dedicated by God to visit his people and to bring solutions to their concerns, their fears, and their troubles. What is a miracle service? A miracle service is an encounter with God where he reveals his power and his glory in the midst of his people an encounter with God where he reveals his power and he reveals his glory in the midst of his people have this at the back of your mind many believers casually come to church they casually come for such a mighty and marvelous service like this well I'm just going to church I was invited by some good fellow perhaps my family member and I'm here just to fulfill the ritual of church. Have it at the back of your mind that God is in this place tonight visiting us to bring solutions to our concerns, to bring solutions to our fears, to bring solutions to our problems, our troubles. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord using a platform like this delivered him from them not some from them all are we together now what is available in a miracle service 
you will be surprised that many believers cannot answer that question. The Bible always likens prophetic gatherings like this to a spiritual feast, to a supper, as we find in Luke 14. Luke chapter 14. We're reading 17. Then for sake of time, we'll jump to 21 and read all to 24. Luke 14, 17, then 21. A service like this in the mind of God as revealed in the ministry of Jesus is a feast, a banquet, and a supper. And it's important for you to know when you go to an occasion, a well-organized occasion, among the many things they do is before the meals come, they serve you with something called a menu. Am I right on that? And it captures a detail of the available meals. It is within your power to choose. They tell you this is available, that is available, so that you know, you have an idea. Luke 14. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. You don't invite people when you are still preparing. You don't invite people to a banquet when the kitchen is yet to finish all the things that they have to do. When all things are set, the table is set, then you can invite them. Jump to verse 21 for time's sake. He invited a few other people and they gave all kinds of flimsy excuses and so on and so forth. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Listen carefully. Then the master of the house, being angry that those that were invited refused to show up, he said, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring the following. The poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. What kind of feast is this? Usually in Jewish days, these kinds of people were not even allowed in the city. They were kept outside of the city because they were termed unclean. But there is a kind of feast, there is a kind of banquet that is particularly made for these kinds of people. The poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. Reading to 24. Next verse. And the servant said, Lord, it is done. So he called on these groups of people and they came. He said, yet there is still room. 23. And the Lord said, go to the highways and the byways or the hedges and compel them, any them you find, confuse them, lost them, defeated them, like the men, of, the men who came to David in the place of Adullam. Any them you find who are available, they may not be lame, they may not be weak, they may not be part of the first set of people, but there is still room for them. A miracle service is beyond the healing service. A miracle service is beyond a deliverance service. A miracle service is a service that is open to anyone who desires to feast, enjoying the power, the grace, the wisdom of God. All those who had these conditions were called and they said there is still more room. I may not be sick. I may not be oppressed. But how about confusion? How about the age-long captivity? How about the limiting beliefs that have kept me? Let's finish that scripture. And the Lord said, go to the highway, the byway, compel them to come, that my house shall be filled. Final verse. For I say unto you, that none of those people who rejected this offer shall taste of my supper. When God calls men, it's a feast, it's a banquet. What is available in a miracle service like this. Number one, God's power to save. I'm listing for you the spiritual menu that is available in this place tonight. God's power to save. Number two, what is available in such a prophetic gathering like this? God's power to heal. Luke 5, reading 17, then we jump to 24 and end at 26. Luke 5, 17, we jump to 24, ending at 26. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, I'd like you to look closely here. There's a lesson I want to bring out. That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town in Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem. And the Bible records that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Take notes. 
not present to heal one person, present to heal as many. Now jump to verse 24. The Bible says, talking about one man who was sick of palsy, but that he may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. And he said unto the sick, one man, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy couch, and go into your house. 25. And immediately he arose. The Bible says the power of God was present to heal them. But only one person was healed in that meeting. The power of God did not come to heal only one person. It was available for any them whose hearts were open and hungry. He took up that whereupon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God. Final verse 26. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear saying we have seen we have seen strange things today can you imagine that many of them desired to be healed but they did not know how to connect to the healing power of god they were celebrating and rejoicing with those who were sick and as wonderful as that is and that was they went away some of them perhaps not having their healing it's important for you to know that in a spiritual banquet like this called a miracle service God's power to heal is available and I'm praying in the name of Jesus that tonight's healing will not just be for a few people but it will be for as many people who are tired like the woman with the issue of blood having spent all her earnings she was not an irresponsible woman this woman worked hard and she saved money only to use it to take care of her health her passion to remain, her passion to not die, made her to turn and become a poor woman again. What is available in a miracle service like this? God's power to deliver. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the sons of Jacob, it says, Obadiah 1 and verse 17, The sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It is first deliverance, then holiness, then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. What is available in a miracle service like this tonight? Illumination. Like you are receiving now. Light from heaven. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. Our precious worship team sang it so beautifully. Charging us to arise. Hallelujah. It is not only God that will arise. You too, you will arise. Because the reason why he has arisen is so that you will also arise. Is that true? Yes. But the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. An explanation of the issues of concern alongside the way out. You see that? In the presence of God and in a spiritual banquet like this, God brings light to the dark areas of your life. As the word of God is coming now, God is bringing perspective, clarity, understanding. You may be knowing why you are where you are, but it does not just give you information as to why you are where you are. He shows you through the lens of scripture, the way out of any trouble, the way out of any calamity. I prophesy to you, someone is finally finding his way out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say it again, someone who is hungry and desperate is finally finding his way out. Way out of losses, way out of retrogression, way out of shame, way out of reproach. It, happen for, it happens for others until it gets to your turn. It looks like there is a mysterious force that sits on your way going forward and you are not able to go forward. There is always a way out. The Bible says, and Jesus himself knew what to do. It is dangerous to not know what you do. Tonight, God is showing someone what to do. So in a spiritual feast like this, God's power is available to save even to the uttermost. God's power is available to heal. God's power is available to deliver. God's power is available to bring light, illumination, direction. What else is here? Restoration. 
Ah, God's power to restore. Yes, sir. To compress time, to restore. Crying because you lost money. Crying because you lost relationships. Crying because as at the time opportunities came, you were not wise enough to know how to maximize them. Now you are wiser and yet the opportunities have gone. Can God bring it back again? Welcome to a banquet where your restoration is part of the menu in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you believe that I'm not joking. If you don't believe in the God of restoration, your life will be bitter, mara. It will be bitter in many regards. Because can I tell you, life does not wait for you to be wise to maximize it. It just passes. If at the time the opportunity came, you didn't know God enough. You didn't understand the kingdom enough. That opportunity just passes like that. And so God says, I will restore. Not just the things, I can restore the years. For someone you literally wasted your January till October in confusion, foolishness and pride. Last week you repented. What do you now do with the days left? There is a God who restores. In the name of Jesus, there is a God who restores. Hmm. You believe this? There is restoration. What else is available here? Guidance and direction. This is powerful. I hope you know that speed is useless without direction. Anybody who fires on all four cylinders on the road is usually someone who has been able to have a clear direction. Every time you are confused, perhaps you are trying to look for a house and you are not sure which is which, the first thing that suffers is your speed. You have to slow down until you ascertain the house you are getting to. Only a foolish person will be speeding in confusion. There is a relationship between speed and direction. Are we together? So when the devil wants to mark your life at a moment, he brings an atmosphere of confusion around your life. And with that confusion, your speed is impeded. And I taught you that the unit of destiny is time. Whatever takes dominion over your time has taken a major portion of your life and destiny. The unit of destiny is time. This is why God comes with guidance and direction. For someone, you can be seated here and tonight while this word is coming, as the anointing comes, you may not fall, you may not jump, you may not shout, but you will just hear in your spirit, the United Kingdom is where your destiny is. That's it. Direction has come for you. I hope you know that when God speaks, the power to make what he says comes with it too. It is only men who speak and yet don't have the power to back what they say. If God tells you go left, the power to take you to go left comes with his word. Son of man, stand up upon your feet, Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1, and I will speak unto you. He gave him an instruction, but the man did not have the power to comply. Verse 2 says, and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet, and I heard. It's one thing to want to go where you... Where. Listen, everybody's destiny, hear me please. There is, the Bible says, I think that should be um, Hebrews 10 and verse 7, if I recall. It says, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will. God is not scratching his head, you will hear me say, wondering what to make out of your life. You are not the only one he created. Out of the eight billion people on earth, I can tell you, everybody has a destiny in Christ. It is only a wicked God who will bring you to the scene and leave you to keep roaming around freelancing your idea about what to make about your life. There are many people here, you may not be sick, but you need to sort this issue of confusion and destiny. They wake up in the morning, absolutely nothing driving their lives. Absolutely. They sit today and say, I'm having something for ministry. Tomorrow, I'm having something for business. Um, next tomorrow, well, I don't know. And they live their lives just getting old with no mark upon the earth. No mark upon the sands of time. 
Tonight should be that night you get angry and say, Lord, I am tired of escorting men while making constructive progress towards destiny. What did you create me for? I can't be here to waste time celebrating birthdays with no vision, celebrating birthdays with no direction. My confusion started at 13. Now I am 45, still confused. Guidance and direction. Are we together? Yes. There are literally people right now. I want you to listen to me carefully. There are literally people right now confused. Nobody is getting blessed because of your life. No one is eating because you are alive. No one is serving Jesus because you are alive. You didn't build any school. You didn't build any organization. You are not even, you are nothing at all. Wake up in the morning, it's night. Let's go to bed. Wake up in the morning again, it's night. Let's go to bed. What do we have today? Social media, five minutes, turning to five hours. What is trending now? By evening, I'm hungry. You go and eat. If you don't have money because you are not visionary, you beg. In any case, life just goes. If you are God, will you design such a life for an individual? Every spirit of the waster, wasting your time, wasting your life. This may not be for everybody, but from the depth of my spirit, I'm prophesying to someone who has been wasting the gift of life, wasting the gift of time, admiring those who are making a mark in destiny. I pray for you among the many things that will rest on you tonight, a clear direction of your purpose and destiny. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hear me. Jesus is very, as a revelation of God, is very unapologetic about his hatred for unfruitfulness. Two stories in the Bible demonstrate the pain that God feels every time we're unfruitful. The first was the story of the fig tree. It was not a parable. He came and he saw a fig tree having green leaves but never produce figs and he cursed it. He said, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Second story was the story of the parable of the talents. He gave one five talents. He gave one two talents. He gave the other one talent. You would think he would be satisfied. After all, out of three, there was two over three success. If I were, if I were him, I would be happy. At least two people did well, but he focused on the one person as if all the rest failed. That's how un unapologetic God is as far as un un unproductivity and fruitfulness is concerned. Make up your mind from this night that I must live a fruitful and a meaningful life. Every trouble you are there, trouble to others you are there, but blessing and affecting people, Christmas is coming by next month where people are looking for gifts to bless all those who God used to bless them, they forget you. Even your neighbors don't remember you because there is nothing about your life counting. You watch people buy cows, they buy gifts, and they're telling people thank you, yet you are the neighbor, and nobody can say thank you. I had you praying, and it inspired me to pray. It was you that brought order to my life. Hi. In the name of Jesus, I pray again. Whatever is wasting your days, whatever is wasting your time, that you are just existing but not living. I'm praying that this night, in this place, may you find a clear direction to purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. This one is hard, ba? Yes. In every menu, not every meal tastes the same. There are others that are hot and spicy. Am I right on that? There are others that are, okay, you can make do with it. What is available in a minute, in a minute miracle service like this? Angelic activities. Angelic activities. I believe in the ministry of angels. I hope that next year God will grant us grace. And I would do a series on the ministry of angels. The average believer does not even know why angels exist and to what end. So people do all kinds of things. Some command them, some shout, some beg them, some worship them. And there's all kinds of confusion around the ministry of angels. May God grant us grace to really know why they are here. And next year I hope we'll be able to deal with the subject of angels. Are we together now? 
but everywhere God is, angels will usually come there. As we learn in Genesis chapter 28, Jacob came to a place called Luz, and the Bible says he lay on a stone to sleep, and he saw a ladder that was ascending, I mean a ladder that reached the heavens, and at the top of it, was God or the appearance of God himself speaking, I am this, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And then he saw angels ascending and angels descending. When Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible lets us know that when he was done praying, after Satan came to tempt him and he became victorious, angels came and ministered to him. Everywhere you see the presence of God, you also find the ministry of angels. Why are they there? The Bible lets us know with clarity and precision that angels are there to bring to pass the word of God. They walk in partnership with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, causing his word to come to pass. Are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to them that be the heirs of salvation? Hallelujah. Are we together? The ministry of angels. If God is in that place, like he is in this place, you must find the ministry of angels. The Bible lets us know that there are many activities that happen in Mount Zion, but ye are come to Mount Zion, and he begins to list the things there, the spirits of just men made perfect. Are we together? And he says an innumerable company of angels. That means as many in the midst of the thousands, tens of thousands of people in this place tonight, there are angels that are more than the people. If, if a legion of demons can be in one man, how much more the angels of God? How many demons fell from heaven? It was only a third. Angels. That means there is one standing near you. And it's not standing to just hear what I'm saying. He's standing to hear what God is saying through me. That when God says it's time for you to arise, the angels stand. Have you seen what angels did? Two angels use hailstone and they killed people. You don't know what angels can do when the command comes from God. They are not there to do your bidding. I told you, they are there to do God's bidding. If it looks like they are obeying you, is they are not slaves to you. No. They, they, they are sent to minister, to bring to pass the speakings of God. It is when the saints carry the word of God and make it their word, then it looks like they are obeying you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12 that it pleased Herod. Herod decided to vex certain Jews and they caught James and beheaded James. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, they now caught Peter and they bound Peter expecting that after the feast of unleavened bread they would bring him out to the people verse 5 says the church became angry and they said there is something we can do we are not alone we may not have access to the prison but we know there is angelic ministry and the bible says but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him how did god answer verse 6 the bible now says when herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the Bible says the keepers before the door went to the prison. Verse 7. Behold, who did God send? The angel of the Lord came unto him and a light shined in prison. And it was that angel that brought him out. Please help me honor Reverend Sam Oye. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence tonight. Are we together? So what do we find here? The ministry of angels. What else is available in a miracle service like this? Impartation, a transference of graces. A transference of graces. Technology has been able to simulate impartation to a degree using a device called Bluetooth. Say Bluetooth. I don't know why it's tooth, but Bluetooth. That's what we're taught. Here is a world that believes everything you can't ask. Once you are not the inventor, you take whatever you were given and swallow it like that. So I can bring my device near yours or within a reasonable distance. Isn't it amazing? And a whole information without our phones contacting themselves, there can be a transference. You can transfer music, 
You can transfer rubbish. You can transfer thoughts. That can, whatever it is, there is a possibility and it can live and it will not deplete the information that is in that device. Say impartation. Hmm. You don't transfer music and then yours disappears. No, except your phone is not good. Listen, you need to believe this. And I'm sure there are all kinds of advancements that are coming now. Always be conscious. And let me tell you this. Impartation in a house like this is both vertical and horizontal. It is not only the man of God. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered, including your sitting. Ordered by the Lord. You may not know that you've been crying and say, Lord, I'm trusting for a grace. This laziness and God will order your step to sit near someone that has a grace for diligence. And while you are looking at apostle, the grace is coming from here, but it's also coming across. You have to believe this. Impartation. You believe what I'm saying? Impartation is not just a transference of graces from the man of God. No. There are people who Perhaps they would have traveled and not come for this service. But for your sake, in addition to what God is doing through Joshua Selman, he brings them and puts them. Remember the Bluetooth thing we are talking about? Just close to you. Because that guy, he gave God a kind of seed that made God to vow and say, I place the power to prosper on you. And you have been crying, oh God, bring my family out of pain. You wanted to sit inside, but the person carrying that grace is in the overflow. And even though you came early, God still okay that you sat outside and while you are complaining saying I want apostle to see me the real person carrying the grace you have been fasting for is seated close to you if you don't believe what I just said you are not a Christian you don't know God it is the reason why every man of God must know that you are just one of the vessels being used in a service like this not everybody will stand on stage but everybody is being used by God that means as a man of God, as I am preaching, if there are graces I need that are available and I'm just conscious of giving without receiving, I can live empty even though I came full to bless people. A spiritual banquet like this has the menu of the power of God to save, the power of God to heal, the power of God to deliver, the power to bring light, illumination, and explanation to your predicaments alongside a scriptural way out. The power to restore guidance and direction, angelic activities, enforcing the speakings of the spirit. What is available in a spiritual banquet like this? Encounters. Both physical encounters and spiritual encounters what is an encounter a supernatural experience that brings you into the reality of a truth the reality of a dimension the goal of encounters is to create conviction some of you are Christians but you don't really believe God yet can he do it but something can happen to you but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. I know God lives but ah, the kind of trouble and the kind of pit that I am in and while the word is coming, it's a supernatural thing. I may not even be talking along that area. Suddenly the grace for you comes and the reality of God in an area just becomes crystallized in your life. I can believe God. I can build this house. Even though all I have home and abroad is 100,000. As I was hearing the word, an example will come from the preacher that may not even be connected to the sermon for your sake. And something from that example will suddenly both your logic and your discernment will agree that God is able. And immediately that happens, your mind and your spirit has received that reality. Encounters, both physical and spiritual. Those who encounter God become testaments of the dimensions of him they encounter. When you encounter a healing Jesus, your life will be a clear manifestation of a healing Jesus. 
when you encounter a prospering Jesus, your life becomes a clear manifestation of a prospering Jesus. When you encounter the Jesus that delivers, one of the ways that God brings men into ministry is to choose the area he has called them to serve and give them unique encounters in that area so that their convictions become strongest. Luke will say in Luke chapter 1, the things that are most surely believed. The things that are most surely believed. You don't believe everything at the same level. On a, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, there are some of you who believe prosperity more than you believe healing. There are some of you who believe deliverance more than you believe all of these things. And God's assignment in an atmosphere like this is to upgrade your conviction through encounters so that it will match the threshold that can deliver the result expected. If he has called you, for instance, to take his ability to prosper and favor men, and your believing God in the area of favor and prosperity is two on a scale of one to ten, nobody will place demand on the grace of God on your life because that is almost zero in the spirit. You can't get any result like that. And so an encounter will come. And that encounter lifts your faith level in that area to a level where you can be blessed and through your life you can bring many into that experience. If we're together, say amen. amen. Now listen carefully. What are the major channels by which God visits his people? I need to say this. There are major channels. What are the major channels? Every time... God is bringing a visitation to his people. It's important for you to know that there is a modus operandi in the spirit. God is a God of patterns and God is a God of order. Are we together? If it is a God of the Bible visiting his people, like Zephaniah says, there is a way that he comes through. Number one, what are the channels? Every time God is visiting his people, the first way he visits people is through his wisdom. His wisdom, as the word is taught like you are hearing now, there is a visitation of God's wisdom. Christ appears unto you as the wisdom of God. His wisdom, as the word is taught, his wisdom is revealed. Number two, God visits people by making available his power. Wisdom constructs your understanding. It guides your decision. You see the excellency of wisdom is seen in the quality of decisions that you take. If your decisions are frail, if your decisions are weak, if your decisions do not produce superior results, it is because you are bankrupt of the wisdom of God. The excellency of wisdom is seen in the quality and the superiority of decisions that are taken and the results that follow. So number two, his power. When God brings solutions, they are beyond scientific, even though they can be scientific. They are beyond philosophical, even though they can be philosophical. God's primary way of bringing solutions to people is through the supernatural, his power. So it is possible that you came with an infirmity and minutes after now, that infirmity leaves. You see, medicine will be able to confirm that it's gone. That devil is gone and gone forever. You see that now? Yes. But that the technology by which that result came, even though can be explained by science, is through the power of God. And there are mysteries, ladies and gentlemen, when it has to do with the business of the power of God. There is a portion of it that is given to the saints to understand. But there are certain aspects of God's power the Bible says there is no searching of his understanding. There is a level as far as the administration of God's power is concerned. The Bible says just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child, there is an aspect science can explain, logic can explain, philosophy can explain, intellect can explain, but there is a dimension beyond which the only thing you say is to God be the glory. This one is only God that knows how he did it. Like the testimony that you'll be talking about after this service. There, there, there is, listen, there is an aspect of it 
that you would tell people one plus one i know how it became two i know how it became four from there i can't explain all i know is that there was an answer equal to whatever god said listen science teaches us that one plus one is two but you see one plus one plus god equals to the answer he puts there it can be three, it can be ten, it can be one million. The moment you bring God into an occasion, he is in control of the answer that he puts there. Are we together? God's equation for you. A tenant plus bankruptcy can equal a landlord. An equation that does not make sense. Every time results don't make sense, there is a factor there you are not seeing. The moment God is introduced, he disrupts logic. It goes beyond the realm of reasoning. So don't start calculating it. You may not see wind tonight. You may not see rain. But don't ask how the valley is filled with water. This is God for you. If I were asked to lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt, I probably would gather certain engineers and say, what do we do now? Let's be able to measure the depth of the water because the first assignment will be to successfully part the sea. The second assignment is to find a way of looking for sand to build that gap now that depth that has been created but not when it's god everything can happen overnight like you are seated here now and god is waking someone somewhere in the name of jesus christ i'm not motivating you i'm prophesying to you that you are seated here and the god that i serve waking someone and bringing to remembrance putting you in the hearts of men it is true Is someone learning what is the third channel as far as experiencing his visitation encounters like I said earlier on he comes revealing his wisdom he comes revealing his power he brings you encounters do you know ladies and gentlemen that you can be seated here while you are looking at me the spirit of grace will come and pick you to a dimension like it took Ezekiel and you will no longer be in this service and you are somewhere with the king of glory and he's showing you things showing you things bringing direction all of a sudden everybody disappears in this room and it is only you an audience of one and his majesty is speaking to you bringing perspective to your life showing you what has been happening in your family that this thing happened you don't need to be a prophet blessed is the man that God causes to approach him the moment he opens the vistas of encounter with them will come explanations solutions and conviction do you believe this what is the fourth channel by which God visits his people the prophetic ah, the prophetic the prophetic is a potent channel every time men cried unto God he came down using the prophetic I have heard the cry of my people Exodus chapter 3 by reason of their taskmasters, he says, and I am come down. We never saw him physically, but we saw a mysterious camera called Moses who encountered the God of the Bible and he led literally single-handedly went to Egypt, the center of wizardry and brought over two point something million people out with only a rod and no assistance whatsoever. The prophetic is powerful when men are in trouble every time men got into trouble whether self-inflicted or caused by darkness God will send a prophet a prophet here does not mean a prophetic office there are three levels to the prophetic there is the office of a prophet manifesting the prophetic are we together there is the gift of prophecy but there is the operation of the prophetic. The operation of the prophet is not limited to individuals inclined to the prophetic. Maturity brings every believer to a state where you can operate in the prophetic. Are we together? Yeah. This is very important. So God comes to us like he's coming to us tonight by his wisdom, by his power. I'm saying that so that you will expect the miracle service is already going on. There are people, the moment they only believe they are in church when someone is shouting, 
and falling and rolling. They say, finally, service has started. Whereas God came seasons, visiting people, bringing comprehension of truth. Now, this is the zenith of my discussion before we begin to pray. And please, I want you to lend me your attention. May I request you pray in the spirit for one minute so that you open up your channels for reception further. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A quick recap. We explained that a miracle service is a moment where God decides, according to Zephaniah 317, to come in the midst of his people and to bring a visitation. Hallelujah. Mightily revealing his power, revealing his glory in the midst of his people. And I did tell us the things that are available in a miracle service like this. That every service like this, according to Jesus, is likened to a feast and a supper. And that in that supper, there are all kinds of people. They brought the lame, they brought the sick, they brought the maimed, and he said, there is still space for more. And he said, now I will not give conditions. Anybody who is available, join the list of the more. The feast, there is still room for it for you. And I began to list for you that the, there are certain things available in a feast like this power to save power to heal in fact all that is captured in psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5 they are called his benefits five of them bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 says bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefits the focus is on the lord but also remember that he comes with benefits number one who forgiveth all thine iniquity not some Two, who healed all thy diseases, not some. Three, who redeemed thy life from destruction, deliverance. And number four, honor, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Five, prosperity, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle, his benefits. Now, why do many believers come into an atmosphere like this? and yet they do not receive please i want you to pay attention i've studied for many years by the privilege of god's grace the supernatural and this spirit activity of god visiting his people and why in the midst of such mighty presence of god others receive and others do not and i've been able to put together by the spirit of god four major reasons there are many but in order of priority, I have found out from my life, from the experience of scripture, from the life of mighty people who have commanded visitations across territories and nations, that there are four major reasons why although God shows up in the midst of his people, his people may not receive. John chapter 1 from verse 11, John puts it beautifully. He says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. It is possible that God comes. The he there can be any expression of God. His wisdom came to his own. His power came to his own. His favor came to his own. Are we together? His lifting came to his own. Jesus the way came to his own. Jesus the truth came to his own. Jesus the life came to his own. The deliverer came to his own, but they received him not. Then the next verse says, but as many as received him. Unfortunately, as many. Doesn't leave a number, but it tells you there are chances that there are people who will still not receive, even though he came. One thing is a fact from this scripture, he came. He came. His power came. His healing came. Our precious people led us through that song. That the God of signs and wonders, the Savior, the Redeemer, that he would come and make manifest his presence. He's heard it like he heard Jabez. But whether or not you will receive tonight will be dependent on these reasons. Are you ready? Number one. The first reason why many do not receive in an atmosphere like this is lack of expectation lack of expectation there is no dis definition of their desired expectation this is very important Luke 18 let's hurry up Luke 18 from verse 40 to 43 lack of expectation 
believers just stroll into his presence carelessly hoping that at least I'm here whatever God wants to do with me and while that is sincere that is not enough there must be a definition to your desired expectation talking about blind Bartimaeus, Jesus is passing through the Jericho now that would be his last time passing that street and Jesus stood and commanded him, the him being blind Bartimaeus, to be brought to him. And when he was come near, he asked him, 41, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto you? Look up, please. This would sound silly, almost irresponsible and sarcastic of Jesus. You would think that because a man were blind and he was shouting, Have mercy on me. He did not define what he wanted. Have mercy on me means let me get your sympathy. It doesn't mean that he has defined his expectation. Jesus taught us a profound lesson here. He comes to the man. You ask for my sympathy. I am here. Available to do all. I'm ready to give you a visitation. What do you want? And the man now zoomed down. He said that I may receive my sight. I've taught you here. Remember our, our teaching on the scene? I, he never said that I may see. Because his eyes were open. It's just that he was not seeing. The problem was not lack of eyes. The problem was not even lack of the movement of eyes. Is that he did not have sight. Your eyes can be open, yet you are not seeing. Jesus never said, see. Look at how Jesus answers. Jesus said unto him, you ask to receive your sight. I won't give you something else. I will give you consistent with your expectation. Verbatim. Receive thy sight the man at gate beautiful when he came he was a man who was lame but his expectation was to receive arms probably he had children who knows he had relatives who knows or he wanted to take care of his immediate need and he saw this gentleman Peter and John going to pray at the hour of prayer and he stops them and you know hoping that he would get something they said look on us and the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive but the Bible tells us that it's something what is something expecting to receive something consistent with his arms and Peter said no if I leave this man this way, silver and gold, let me just tell you straight. I'm sorry to disappoint your expectation. So Peter defines the something. He says, I know what you are looking for. Silver and gold. Sorry we do not have it. However, we will not leave you in this state. There is something we have. And even though it is not yet your expectation, it is really what you need. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the real something you need is the ability to rise up and walk. This is a prophetic message. There is someone who is looking for silver and gold right now. But you are coming to people and they are telling you, no, we will not give you. And you are offended because what you really need is the ability to rise up and walk. Arise, shine, your light has come. Rise up and walk. This is not just to a man who is physically lame. Your ability to rise up. If you cannot rise up, you cannot walk. It takes courage to rise up. It takes discernment to rise up. It takes a revelation of who you are in Christ to rise up. There are many of you who have been sitting around the corridors of destiny, begging for arms, and God keeps sending people who you get disappointed by because the something you are expecting is silver and gold, and they are coming like I'm coming tonight, that beyond silver and gold, in my case, you will get both silver and gold in the name of Jesus, but beyond it beyond it there is an ability that is greater than silver and gold in the economy of heaven the ability to rise up and walk is greater than silver and gold you can receive silver and gold but if you one of the major characteristic of living things is movement and motion and silver and gold does not have the power on its own to create motion the value of silver and gold is that you can rise up and walk and use it. You came here asking for something. You are fastening your eyes on me, expecting to receive. For others, you are just praying and saying, Lord, something that meets my immediate need. And the apostle is saying, no, God is too mindful. He's mindful of your today, your tomorrow and next. Unfortunately, 
I do not have that which will meet your immediate need, but there is something I can give you, an ability, and that comes in the name of Jesus, not stored in a bank, not stored in a marketplace. You don't find it in a mall. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. Someone prophesy, say, rise up. Rise up. You are speaking to yourself, say, rise up, rise up. and walk. Rise up and walk means rise up and excel. Rise up and walk means shake yourself from the limitations of yesterday and be able to stand up and start making constructive progress. Rise up and walk means rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. The Bible says the righteous falleth seven times. Listen to me, let me tell you, the ability to rise up and walk is proof of courage, audacity. Rise up after a loss. Rise up after pain. Rise up after limitations. Rise up and walk. Such as I have, men can have the ability to make others rise up and walk. This is powerful. Men can have the ability in the name of Jesus to cause nations to rise up and walk, ministries to rise up and walk, businesses to rise up and walk. That everywhere you see lameness, don't just think silver and gold. Remember, there is an ability within your spirit, and you can speak to systems, to structures, to men, to families, to destinies. Let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus, the one who gave gifts to men. I speak to you where you have been at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation tonight rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and excel rise up and walk in the name of jesus christ please be seated lack of expectation you must define your desire tonight don't come in carelessly and say, Lord, as you are touching others, touch me. What does touch me mean? Because what touch me means in the mind of God is not what he means. And because he's not the one who has the need. He gives you the liberty. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. And what things soever ye desire, name them, give them a frame. When you pray, you see that? That means one of the laws of prayer is creativity and imagination. Vision must be part of what guides your effective prayer. If there is no vision, your prayer will be amiss. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. What is the them? The them that is already defined. The them already defined. Every time people came to Jesus with a clear definition of their expectation, whether it was a centurion son or to, that their eyes be open or to rise up from, you know, their state of lameness with palsy, Jesus responded immediately. That is the reason why we guide people by allowing you to come with prayer requests. You see that now? Prayer request is God's way of helping to coordinate your expectation, to give it definition, to give it form, to help to guide you. So that when you write five, six things, you are writing it using your mind, you are writing it, and, and listen, there is intelligence. The Bible says watch and pray. The word watch there does not just mean be vigilant. It means let your mind be an active part of that process. Hallelujah. Lack of expectation. So whilst you are seated here right now, it does not take long for the power of God to visit people. But make sure you frame your expectation. And for those who are following across the globe, doesn't matter what nation, what region, you can begin to pen down your expectations. Not just to send them to us, but so that you will be a witness. That you will take them one by one. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. I told you it's a banquet. You can taste the goodness of God. Not just believe and expect. You can taste. There is a frame to it. Your life witness that God is good number one let's hurry up why do many fail to receive even in the midst of such an atmosphere lack of expectation can I give you number two lack of sensitivity lack of sensitivity their word comes only God knows how many people's words has come for someone that rise up and walk, I said, 
that is your miracle service word. That's it. You've been like a lame man sitting at gate, beautiful. And God is speaking to you tonight, rise up. Rise up takes courage. Rise up takes light. Rise up takes the fortitude to stand alone. Rise up takes the grace, the ability to be controversial until your life proves otherwise. Rise up and walk. Lack of sensitivity. Their word comes, but they are not sensitive and they are distracted. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 44, we'll just jump to 44 for the sake of time, but the context starts from 40. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. It says, if only thou had known, even in this thy day, the things that pertain unto your peace. It says, but they are hid from your eyes. And then he makes a very interesting statement. Go to 44, please. It says, and shall lay ye even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another for the simple reason. All of the calamities that were explained in 43 and the early part of 44 will come simply because thou knowest not the time of your visitation the time thou shall arise he says and have mercy upon Zion he says because the time to favor her yea the set time the word set time there is the word kairos the opportune time the time that has coincided with God's predeterminate counsel can I tell you, there are seasons in life and destiny where the waters of destiny is steered. And the Bible says, whoever was the first, it was about sensitivity. There were no sentiments to it. Nobody's name was put that this year you will be the one to walk. There were many people around Bethesda, the lame, the halt, all kinds of people. The Bible says they were waiting for the stirring of the water. Two information the Bible does not give. The exact day the angel comes does not tell us. It just know that he's coming and be prepared. Take sensitivity. There were many people who had the potential to receive Elijah's mantle. Even those who were under his training, they were students without sensitivity. But this man said, I discern that you are going. And he said, if you can see me, it takes sensitivity, ladies and gentlemen, to receive from God. Are you ready for number three? We have to rush. Can you imagine that all I'm giving you is a charge? Number three, are you ready? What is the third reason why many people do not receive from God? I call it manifesting conditional faith. Write it and I will explain to you. Manifesting conditional faith. You can put condition in, um, what they call that thing? Huh? Bracket or whatever English people. Manifesting conditional faith, in quotes. What does that mean? God has to move in a certain way for you to believe he has moved. Conditional faith. First Kings chapter 5, let's look at verse 9 to 12. There are many people whose faith is tied to a certain way. If God does not move this way, I can't believe he's the one moving. Watch this. This is the story of Naaman in the house of Elisha. My servant, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, my apologies, 2 Kings 5 verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses. Remember, the king now beckoned on him. Elijah, Elisha now said, okay, come to me. And the Bible says, so Naaman came with his horses, follow carefully, and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger, listen, and said, tell Naaman, go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. As a result, the Bible says Naaman was wroth, he was angry and went away. Why? He said, behold, I thought you would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of his God and strike his hand over the place to recover me. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Papa rivers in Damascus better than all of this? May I not go and wash in them? The Bible says he 
turned and went in a rage. Because when he came to the man of God, he expected, number one, that you come, ah, you are the now man, you are the great man. All right, let me tell you what to do. Turn around, do this, do that. You are a noble man. You can't go and wash in a dirty river, Jordan. There are clean ones that match your status. It's amazing how people come to God. There is a difference between having expectation and commanding God to behave in a way that suits your lust. Are we together now? Yes. Your expectation is the end result. The method is exclusively God's prerogative. You are not given the liberty to choose how God visits you. You are only given the liberty to set the vision that this is the expected picture. The moment you put God in a mold and say you must use this formula. For instance, there are people who if they never fall down, even if all the anointing in the world rests on their head, they, believe, they live disappointed. You see them as if they are returning from a funeral. God, I was here. I even sat in front. Whereas something mighty has landed upon their head. Are we together? God taught me many years ago. Yours is to believe me. Allow me to choose the method. There are many factors that guide God's choosing the method. Number one is your faith level. Number two, the human vessels available to partner with prophecy. They, they can alter the way God acts. For instance, if God's desire is that by tomorrow, if I prophesy to you that by this time tomorrow, someone will give you a job. Watch this. I've taught you how prophecy works. The spirit of wisdom goes around looking for the human vessel that will come into partnership with that word. I can choose as an act of my volition. Are we together now? To refuse to partner with God. God will have, that is the reason why the spirit of wisdom is there. He will keep using different strategies. The most important thing is that his word will not return to him void. Mary had a right to reject she would have said, listen, I don't want any trouble. I'm preparing for my wedding. Don't bring trouble. You are a wicked angel. You waited until I'm planning for wedding. You now appear and you want to disrupt my life. Carry your trouble and get out of this house. He would have respected her and he would have left. The mother of Jesus would have been called something else. But for sure, that, that incarnation would have happened. Are we together? This is very powerful. Tonight... Don't give God any conditions to have to move through a formula. Lord, the most important thing is that causes and yokes must get out of my family. How that will happen this night, Lord, I do not know. If it means shouting, I will shout. If it means lifting my hands, I will lift. Sometimes Peter did not even know when Satan entered him. He was just smiling. And Jesus said, do you know that Satan has finished his business with you? I had to pray for you. And yet he never saw Jesus praying. And Jesus said, I was praying all the while. Lord, no matter how you want to move in my life and my family, go ahead. The most important thing is that this yoke must be lifted. The most important thing is that doors will come. There are many of us, the moment we say, may God lift you, an uncle comes to your mind. You have forced God to bring that breakthrough through that uncle. And there are some of you harassing every wealthy person because you have this, this, this poor understanding. The moment they say receive in your mind, maybe even in your prayer request now, number one was his name. The name and the name of his wife. Father, this night they will not sleep. No, that's not how a believer works. Listen, you will keep disappointing yourself again and again. There are 8 billion people on earth. Not everybody will tell God no. There are people who are yielded, including Cyrus's. And if they decide to refuse, as the owner of his property called man, he's called the father of spirits. He can manipulate any spirit, including that of Pharaoh, to give you gold. Pharaoh that will not give them straw, now suddenly gives them gold. To tell you that he did not do it by his mind. He was under an influence. When they left, he said, what have I done? I carried the entire treasure of Egypt. Chase them and receive it back. God for you. You would have been blessed since if you said, God, by your wisdom, my ways are not your ways. Is that not what he told you? You have been forcing God, walk through my ways. 
Lord, it is civil defense. It is oil and gas. Because with my little mind, I know that is the only way I can eat and give some of my relatives the remaining. And God says, listen, it is be, I can connect you to men. Don't force God and say, you must give me a job in NMPC. You must give me a job with Shell. You must give me a job. I must work with UN. Hallelujah. And sometimes you will not get certain blessings because you do not have the spiritual stamina to stand the attacks that come with the blessing you are asking God to give you. Every realm of reality has, it has a spiritual stamina, a requirement of stamina to be ushered into that realm. Hallelujah. By the time you get to a place that is the center of wizardry, that everybody in that place is in some cult or somewhere, and now you are a passive, careless Christian, prayer almost zero, word study almost zero, and you are saying, God, bring me in the midst of those occultists. In fact, let me be a PA to the director. God says, I love you too much. I love you too much. It's compassion, not an attack. Because God will look at you and look at your mother praying and say, no, I can't do this to this woman. Are we learning? Number four. Huh. The fourth reason. Why many believers do not receive. Are you ready? Refusal to acknowledge and glorify God through thanksgiving and testimonies. The reason why many believers do not receive or do not sustain what they receive is the refusal to acknowledge God and to glorify Him through thanksgiving and testimonies. Psalm 22, 22. Psalm 22, 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, it says. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Not just in my room. In the midst of the congregation, I will announce to them. You see, let me tell you this. Sometimes, when we have the liberty of time, and people are healed or people are delivered and we ask people to come forward to testify it achieves many reasons attesting to the fact that the man of god is anointed is the least of the reasons you need to know that it is a spiritual system the bible says 10 people jesus gave an instruction to 10 lepers is that in your bible and he was on his way passing and yet he remained there he stood there and the bible says only one came to give thanks when they saw that they were healed, only one came and Jesus said, he didn't even say, oh, thank you, you have done well. He said, were there not 10 of you? Where are the remaining nine? And the Bible says only one was made whole, even though the rest were healed. Are we together? It is beyond a man of God. There are certain levels of lifting when God has lifted you. Proving certain points of anointing and power is unnecessary again. Are we together now? with all due respect and with all humility, trying to prove whether God is in this house or whether we're anointed is childishness. God has already stamped a signature that can never be erased. Are we together now? So when you ask people to come, when you ask people to testify, you are, it's not just proving that the man of God is anointed. Number one, you are letting the nation see like we always sing. That Jesus is the same yesterday, today. There is an unbeliever depending on that performance, that miracle. And then number two, it helps to concretize it in the life of the recipient that God is truly at work and finally seals that miracle. Have this at the back of your mind. There are many of you today, what was glory was turned to shame because when God did it or when it started, you felt that I cannot testify. No, I'm too big. Truly, the pain has left. My God, this thing he said. So the pain has gone. I, I can't feel the growth again. Or this one, I can now move my neck. But can I come out? It's too far. I'm seated at the back at the overflow. Or I'm seated at the basement or anywhere. And whilst you are doing all of that, God is watching you. And then you give room. Because every time spirits leave men, they intend to return. Is it not in your Bible? They intend to return. One way we come into fullness is through thanksgiving. The fullness of anything is achieved through gratitude and thanksgiving. Anything God gives you and it is not yet in his fullness, you can complete that equation and move his hand. 
let the people praise thee and he says the earth shall yield his increase and God even our God will bless us God you gave me tea where is the bread and God says what are you talking about it is tea and bread you promised me and God will say that bread is still far from you because you cannot say thank you for tea someone the tea is not there just because the ingredients are there you begin to dance and roll and say that the ingredients are there means that i can make the tea and while he's saying that god says i will not only give you tea and bread i will give you a factory that now makes it so you can bless others believe what i'm telling you your rent has not come but how about the fifty thousand someone gave you it's too small now can i tell god thank you because of fifty thousand and god says fifty thousand Whereas that's somebody's prayer request. Number one, self. All right. So if you cannot, if you are too big to give me thanks because you think it is too small, then you rather remain at that level. Is the reason why we thank God for any and every miracle in this place. You see, one major problem with ministries that experience the supernatural is that they get so, too used to so, what we call notable miracles. And once a miracle is not outstanding, like rising from the wheelchair, throwing a crutch, a blind eye, visibly blind, opening, and something, once you hear someone say, oh, I can now move, you just clap carelessly, like I just have to do it so that God will not, can, the Bible says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his hair? Anything that God does is deserving of my gratitude. There are times I go to minister and almost all the testimonies are maybe just corrective things nothing necessarily notable i celebrate god in that meeting as if it was dead people that came back to life are we together yeah i'm expecting a job tomorrow oh the job did not come but an old friend called me we had a meaningful discussion that planted hope in my mind father thank you because even though this that i expect is not here i am grateful because i already see your hand moving someone shout thank you jesus let the devil hear you say thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you thank you for doing the things that only you can do only you can do only you can do do not peg yourself to only celebrate God for spectacular things. Everything God does in my life is deserving of my communicating gratitude, no matter how little. And when you learn that with God, no matter how great you are, you can translate that to people. No matter how big a man you are, someone can come and transfer a recharge card of 100 naira and it looks laughable, but you will say thank you. You will take the time to send text messages and say, may God bless you because that 100,000 will come with a gratitude that is worth 1 million. Are we together? Is the reason why certain people start, I'm digressing for a moment just to press a point. There are people today, do you know that generally speaking, if someone keeps giving you 100, 100,000 every day, a time will come, you'll get so used to the 100,000 and then your expectation will rise and you now say, I have two children. Oh, this man started giving me 100,000 three years ago when I did not have a child. Now I have two children. Is he aware of what is happening in Nigeria? And one day you, the courage will be rising gradually until you build momentum to say it one day. Thank you, but by now, that one million should have gotten, that uh, hundred thousand should have gotten to one million. And both God and the man will agree that you deserve to remain there. <laughs> say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, say thank you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Again, for someone, this is your own revelation. Go back and find the top five people that have shown you kindness consistently and tell them I came for miracle service. And I learned the power of gratitude. I have taught you here. I will keep teaching you. Send them a text. Not the type you will send. Then two minutes later, you are begging. Don't beg. Just send a text. You know, believers have funny ways. Calvary greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, the resurrected King and Savior. Amen. Just to keep in touch. Just, and, and network will not even allow that one get there. And then the real request comes. I'm reminding you again that rent has increased and uh, it's like I've not heard from you. Is it that you don't care about me again? And it suddenly makes the prior gratitude look fake. 
there are times for no reason tell people thank you thank you are you learning church for you church i told you is the cheapest institution that sponsors transformation the cheapest institution on earth that sponsors transformation is the church every other institution has age range quotas if they take 10 people out of south south 10 people from northeast that's it sorry for you age range gender prejudices but for the church all that is required is your availability and the meekness to receive hallelujah refusal to acknowledge god can i give you one more let me make it five huh the fifth reason very quickly why many do not receive is dishonor to prophetic instructions this is a very major one dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience or familiarity dishonor to prophetic instructions the fifth reason why people do not receive from god even in an atmosphere like this dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience or familiarity john chapter 2 we'll read 5 then we'll jump to 10 and 11. dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience or familiarity this is the wedding in cana of galilee and wine had finished mary the mother of jesus leads some of the people the disciples to jesus and then she gives them a very good charge his mother said unto the servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it don't want to do it do it and they now did it verse 10 what happened and came to the rulers after the water had turned to wine the ruler said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now and then the bible says this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him at the strength of obedience to prophetic instructions can i give you one more scripture matthew 13 please from verse 54 we're reading to 58 matthew 13 54 to 58 and when he was coming to his own country watch this now he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said whence had this man this wisdom and this mighty works uh-huh 55 is this not the carpenter's son you see their foolish analysis is not his mother called mary and his brethren james joseph and simon and judas and his sisters are they not all with us we know this person whence then had this man all these things as a result the bible says they were offended in him but jesus said unto them a prophet is not supposed to be without honor except in his own country that means every true prophet in any area there is honor that is connected to priesthood there is honor that is connected to results but he says that you stand a chance to be despised in your own place and the bible says as a result he did not many miracle many mighty works there because of their unbelief jesus for you almighty jesus healing jesus i have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that baba wani kamarka i have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that baba wani kamarka Truly I have 
searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Baba Wali Kamarga. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Baba Wali Kamarga. Can I tell you? To receive, let me end this now. There are three keys I want to hand to you. Then we begin to pray. In order to receive of this feast of the spirit, this feast of fat things. Let's go to Isaiah 44, 24 to 27. There are three keys that are locked in that scripture that becomes for us the guiding light into our receiving the miraculous from God. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things. Did you see that? Very profound scripture. Not just the Lord that revealeth, not just the Lord that give it i am the lord that maketh all things that stretch forth the heavens alone and spread abroad the earth by myself next verse please that frustrated the tokens of liars and maketh diviners mad and turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish I like this, that confirmeth the words of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. I say to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. I say it to the deep, be dry and I will dry up the rivers. The Bible says, watch this, you must believe in God himself. The one who makes, the one who gives, the one who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So to receive, what are the keys? Number one, you must believe in God. You must also believe in his love and his power towards you. You must believe in God. You must believe in God. John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. You must believe in God. You must believe in his love. I have loved you with an everlasting love, and with my loving kindness I have drawn you. I have taught you here that every supernatural manifestation from God and by God to his people is a letter coming from heaven to you. And there are two basic things that are written in that letter. Number one, I love you. For every miracle you receive from Jesus, do not just receive the package, read the letter that is there. Every true manifestation of the power of God to the life of the saints comes with a letter from the throne room. One is the letter of love. Number two, he reminds you that he is still El Shaddai, all powerful. Tonight, as you receive diverse miracles from God, I beseech you by the message of God, do not just celebrate the package without reading the letter. My King and my Savior is writing letters to people. For someone, the letter he's writing to you is what I told you before still stands, and I have proven it right now. To some, he's writing to you that though your beginning be small, let your letter end shall greatly increase. For some, he's writing to you that I am still a faithful God and I'm still deserving of your trust. You must sustain the intelligence to read the letter that comes from heaven. Don't just celebrate the healing, the breakthrough, the prophetic word. Don't just fall down and stand up and clean yourself only to go back without receiving the letter. Every one of the many people here gathered tonight and the many more following online, I tell you there is a letter from his majesty. Even our earthly system of delivering letters is so effective. You can literally write letter to someone in the North Pole, the ends of the earth, and guarantee that it will arrive. And thanks to the internet now, with one click, 
one click literally they receive the mail the text or whatever device you are using how much more god there is a letter when he presses send there is no network problem it gets to you for sure i can send a letter to one person i can send a text to one person and of the thousands of people in this place that one person will receive not 10 people not five people under normal circumstances don't say he's writing to us there is a unique letter his majesty is writing bespoke to the challenges that you've gone through for someone if he says i love you it may not make sense to him you were born in comfort all your family members love god you've gone through minimal witchcraft attacks because sacrifices were made before your arrival but to someone that letter i love you from heaven will be the healing balm he comes to someone as a great physician not just to heal you physically but to heal certain deep wounds that have been locked up within your spirit wounds that were created from your background and your upbringing that have destroyed you today the letter of love must be read i have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness i have drawn you you have heard the love language from many fake people many people who were not serious they did not even mean it they were playing games yet you believe them why don't you listen to the one who is the epitome of love the bible says god is love he does not just show love he does not just have love it is the it is the ultimate the summation of his nature in one word is love god is love god is love and it is in the character of love to give this is why you can believe that he will freely give do you believe that so make sure you read the letter that comes that I love you. For others, you are reading the letter, believe me, I am still worthy of your trust. You've lost the job. You got a job in March, lost it in May, got into trouble July, entered prison August, came out September, and you are saying, I'm tired of this thing. I'm about to leave God. And he says, hey, here is a letter from heaven. For your light affliction, which is but for a moment, walketh in you a far more exceeding weight of glory. While you look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. A letter. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time for someone... It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. You heard the touching testimony of the gentleman. Once upon a time, he pushed wheelbarrow, but now has been exalted. That may be a letter for someone. I am still the lifter of men. I don't just lift in Lagos alone. I don't just lift in America alone. I lift anywhere I am believed, even if it's inside a pit. You can enter a dry pit like Joseph. And the lifter does not just bring you from the pit to land. He takes you from the pit to the throne. God for you. The prison to the throne. He took Jesus from Hades until he sat at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. You've tempted me. Let me sing it. I will hold on through the storm. And I will hold on to your word. My life will soon refill. You're the lifter of man. The lifter of man. Who is this for? That I will hold on through the storm. And I will hold on to your word. My life will soon refill. You're the lifter of man. Prophesy. The lifter of time sing I will hold on to the star and I will hold on to your word my life will soon be filled you're the lifter of man the lifter of man does God lift use the life of this man as a case study does God lift ask Joshua Selman does God lift? Ask Reverend Sam. Does God lift? Ask Koinonia. Does God lift? Ask Joseph. Does God lift? Ask Daniel. Does God lift? 
Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Does God lift? Yes, sir. Yes, he does. From where? Anywhere. To where? Anywhere. Did you hear what I said? He lifts, but from where? Anywhere. To where? Say it, from where? Come on now. That anywhere can be anywhere indeed. From anywhere to anywhere. Anywhere can mean Saul to Paul. Anywhere can mean Rahab the prostitute to Rahab the champion. Anywhere can mean Ruth the despised to Ruth the wife of Boaz. Anywhere to anywhere. Let me prophesy to someone, the lifter of man, from anywhere to anywhere, may he lift you in the name of Jesus. You must believe in God's love. Number two, you must believe in his servant. You must believe in his servant. It's not enough to believe in God. You must believe in his servant. If you believe in God and you despise his servant, you will not receive anything. The law is that you must believe in God and you must believe in the vessel he has sent to you. Listen, not the vessel available, the vessel sent. Just because a man is anointed does not mean he's sent to you. There are people I've met that I prayed for and I just sensed in my heart, this is just general prayer. There, there was nothing that was drawn. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. That means Elijah passed certain widows and greeted them. How are you, madam? Fine. And he left. But when he went to the one, he was sent. Are we together? Yeah. You must believe in the vessel sent. Number three and the final key. Then we begin to pray. You must receive by faith the Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God there remaineth a rest what is the condition for that rest the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your hearts like they did in the wilderness it says they heard the word just like we did but they did not mix the word did not profit them the word was available with potential to profit them but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it listen to me ladies and gentlemen i have taught you that faith in one word is obedience no matter what definition you bring to faith if it does not translate to your obeying god and obeying prophetic instructions then a miracle is far from you if it be thou bid me come and he said come he never said, Peter, come. He left it to whoever believed him. Unfortunately, the one who acts is the one who truly believed, not the one who motivates. He said, come. Any one of them would have jumped into that river, that sea, and still walk. Every time God leaves a blessing without attaching a name, it is because it's for all. Bid me come. Come. Where? Where? to the next level come where to a higher dimension of reality he says come and Peter jumped up and began to walk on water while the rest were cheering you can do it you can do it it's not fate when he began to, to sing they say we told you and God said no this is not how I walk with men if they make mistakes trusting me I would defend my name in their life he held him and said why did you doubt but they stopped him from sinking hallelujah why are you here tonight? To partake of that feast of the spirit. Delicacies prepared by the hand of God himself. The Bible lets us know that among the many things he's called is the good shepherd. And the Bible says that shepherds, true shepherds watch their flock even if it's by night. Night is an uncomfortable time. It says while shepherds watch their flocks by night. There are shepherds that only watch their flocks by day when things are good. But this good shepherd, he watches over his flock even by night. And in what way? There are three ways shepherds watch their flock. One, they feed them. Two, they make sure that they get to green pastures, number one. Number two, they guide them. 
because a ship does not have any system of defense on its own its only defense is its ability to stay and trust the leadership of the shepherd are we together now yes what is the third assignment of the shepherd? He insists that they grow and multiply. This is what Jacob did to the sheep of Laban. He insisted that under his watch as a shepherd, multiplication started. So the good shepherd is here. And all of this multiplication and the rest depend on the quality of what you eat. He's giving you the buffet today. He's giving you the menu. My job is to be a faithful waiter. I'm wearing whatever color this is, but I'm a waiter in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I have dropped it on your table. The goodness of God, the benefits of God. It's up to you now to select. If I were you, I would taste everything. No, this kind, it would be foolish to just make this. You know, there are people who want to show that they are very advanced. So when they get to a table, they are hungry. They are coming from a place. Maybe they are even breaking their fast. And they just take just a slice of orange if you are doing it to preserve that's fine but where the atmosphere is set like this no there's rice there's swallow there's soup there's everything then you just take a slice of orange take water and lie that you are all right don't make that kind of mistake here there are others who don't mind they first wash their hand and say shift all this your western things they take one wrap take another one then you think that they feel embarrassed but they still take the third one <laughs> are we together they put one soup they add draw they add vegetables they add whatever they add stew then the protein my goodness every piece will be represented there then they now sit down you invited them there's water wine juice both destructive and organic they join everything together you are permitted to take that much tonight. And you are also permitted, listen, listen. Beyond the plate that you eat in, if you check well, you will see that there is an extra vessel to take some more and to take it for those who deserve to receive. That is how lavish this faithful shepherd is. He's prepared for us a feast. And in the name of Jesus, with the few minutes that we have, I pray that as we stretch in prayer, trusting him to bring deliverance, trusting him to bring healing, that at the end of this service, nobody will walk empty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You have fought for food at physical weddings that carry no power. You fought and insisted you must carry the cabbage, the rice, the chicken. I have children at home. You ate, ate again, sat down, changed your table to eat the next one and carry to go. I'm just joking with you. <laughs> Amen. But here you don't need to change your table. It will keep going around. If you miss it, it comes again. If you miss it, it comes again. Those outside, if you miss it, it comes again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up on your feet. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. begin to pray in the spirit 
thanking God for the word tonight and declaring that you are receiver. Saliberatus kabranda kabaratus yatash. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. All the overflows pray. A family connecting online, connecting by way of television. Go ahead and pray. Salibaras ko prena gebele kash katebas. Ebra katebe katebe nekato soto pregetebas. Take a minute and invest in the spirit. Be a sower tonight. Sowing into the spirit. Sherele ke paratos yadaba. A feast of hard things. A feast of the spirit. An expression of the love and the power of God in the midst of his people. We receive tonight. We receive tonight. We receive tonight. We receive tonight. Come on, someone pray from the depth of your heart. We're in a season where God is taking men to new dimensions. new season in ministry a new season in my life a new season in business season of plenty season of increase season of fire season of power in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray we have but a few minutes and we're going to be as fast as we can ladies and gentlemen let your heart be open he's called you and he never calls the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain I'm going to begin to minister by the Spirit and hopefully at the end of it I will invite God's servant Reverend Sam to just speak over our life since he's here I believe in the corporate anointing just to make prophetic declarations hallelujah today will be one day you will not forget in a hurry in the name of Jesus Christ so you sit back fasten your seat belts allow me do my thing you have believed that's your own so you just leave me and God to do the rest. Your own, you have believed, you've done your own. Hallelujah. Get out of our way. You just stand, be ready to receive and leave me and God together. Hallelujah. But one thing I assure you of is my God will surprise you. Every word that comes, remember you have been taught. Don't be careless. Receive it with your heart. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start by ministering deliverance of people. And the moment I'm done, We'll pray for the sick and we'll hopefully take testimony. I'm seeing my footballer people. Don't worry, my friend. You put down your boots. Eh? I'm going to pray for you. These guys really mean business, these footballers. I think they've seen what God is doing and it's better than going to idols. Is that not true? Hallelujah. All right, so before you shout, I want you to bring those who will come under the anointing. You don't need to do anything. You just listen to the instruction. This is what God is putting in my heart. And this category of people who will be coming out now by the Spirit as I'm speaking, and, and ushers, please, will, will make that very fast. This category of people who will be coming out right now, they are not coming out just for themselves. I'm seeing in the Spirit that these are families that have been tied because I'm seeing chains around the legs of people this has made people immobile they are not able to make destiny progress and god wants to visit people now the time will come i will ask you to shout but for now i'm just going to make that declaration and then i want you to please bring those people out in the name of jesus christ father thank you you have revealed this and every time you reveal 
it is so that you will redeem every one of the people that I've seen in this vision right now I declare by the spirit of grace let that yoke leave now bring them out in the name of Jesus you will not be able to stand it no this is we're talking of the great power of God this is authority in the spirit please bring them out Sali Shalakosiata tied by darkness your redemption comes and it comes speedily comes speedily this is koinonia please come hallelujah oh my help has come oh please bring them the influence of that word you will not be able to stand it if you if you are part of this prophecy the hand of God is coming upon you everyone who has been immobilized by life by destiny by witchcraft this grace is coming upon you and the Lord is bringing deliverance right now to everything there is an end surely there is an end please bring them out if I were you, I'll be praying that everything that has held me down, that I will not make progress in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, it must give way tonight. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me a vision. Please listen. There is such power in this place. And in that vision, I'm seeing like the door of a prison. And I'm just seeing a hand turning a key. And I'm seeing the number 27. 27. I want to pray right now. Every family that has been locked, kept in bondage, I come in the name of Jesus Christ. At the count of three, I decree and declare as that if it's happening in the spirit in the name of Jesus that grace will rest upon you father I stretch my hands as you have revealed to me everyone whose life and destiny has been caged every family that has been caged right now at the count of three be released one two three I open that prison door now bring them out I open that prison door now by the authority of the Spirit, I open that prison door now. Bring them out. Let me pray. I just saw something for those in the overflow outside. Let me speak to those outside. I'm going to come to those inside, all the overflows, but those outside, in the name of Jesus, I want you to bring the people out right now, outside. I'm seen by the Spirit. The Lord is revealing something to me. 
that there are people, watch this, I'm seeing a woman in the spirit with a child, then she keeps losing the child. This is not physical, this is spiritual. There are people who have carried things but they've been losing it outside. I'm stretching my hands right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everyone who is a victim of that, be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Outside, just the outside overflow. This is what God is revealing. I decree and declare everyone aborting destiny, aborting visions, losing things you should carry by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That spirit of loss and waste is hereby destroyed in Jesus' name. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Say, ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Now I want to pray. The Bible says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. Listen, there is fire that is burning here and many, many people, many, many people, you will not escape this. I'm going to ask you to shout the name Jesus once and as you pray, one of the things that God is visiting is curses that create patterns. Curses that create patterns of failure. Curses that create patterns of setback. Are you ready to shout that name? Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that as we shout that name that is above every name, every family, repetitive patterns, patterns of death, patterns of failure, patterns of destruction, let it give way right now. Are you ready, Koinonia? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Negative patterns, negative circles, tying your life, tying your family, tying everything concerning your destiny. Bring them out. I release you. Mother, father, be released. Sister, brother, be released from the north, the south, the east, the west. In the name of Jesus, be released. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit, rebuke the spirit of disfavor. This is the spirit responsible for shame and reproach. I taught last week that word Ichabod. Jabez was named Jabez because the mother bore him in sorrow. But the man got angry one day and said, Lord, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. I want to pray. The spirit that brings shame, shame in relationships, shame in career, shame in ministry. I'm praying right now. Anyone who has been a victim of shame and disfavor, be delivered now. 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 I prophesy to you, be delivered now. The Bible says, and my people shall never be ashamed. Shall never be ashamed. Shall never be ashamed. I'm hearing the name Becky. Becky. I'm sure that may be a short form of Rebecca. Becky, who is that person? You are tying, you are wearing a cloth the same color with the, what you are tying on your head. Becky. <laughs> Becky, please, when you find the person. Becky. 
if I give a prophetic word, please don't just rush and come out because you are desperate. If it's not for you, just believe. I don't have to prophesy directly to you. Are we together? Yours is just to believe. Becky, in the name of Jesus, the person I'm seeing, well, I will pray. Hallelujah. Just come and stand here. No, no, my, relax, be patient. God has located you already, so you don't need to come and just be rolling on the floor. In the name of Jesus Christ, Becky, the Lord is showing me. I want to pray for someone here. The devil has been using your face and people have been seeing you in their dreams as an evil person. Like he uses your face. I'm praying. I just saw, I kept quiet because God was speaking to me on that. They you people go to bed and then they see your face causing destruction. They wake up believing that maybe you are involved in witchcraft. I don't know who that person is, but I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is turning, giving a negative identity in the spirit. Before I come to the Beckys, in the name of Jesus, be delivered from it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Becky, I want to pray for you. Please look at me. You see, when God speaks a word like this, it is because he wants to bring you deliverance. Not everybody is playing games. I want you to believe there is authority in the prophetic word. Hallelujah. And once he calls you, even if he does not tell you anything, the fact that he has called you and you have come, you believe that you never come into his presence and go back the same. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There is a gentleman here. I need to pray for you. Your brother is in jail. Your brother is in jail. As I speak now, he's in prison. He's in jail. And I want to pray because it is a spirit this, this is a spirit of misfortune, bad luck, all kinds of evil things keep happening in the, to the people in your family. Now, I want to pray, two of you in front here, the power of God is coming on you now. I just saw fire on two of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, as that grace rests on you, two of you in front here, in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring unto you that every limitation in your life, you just keep them gently. Let it go. Father, you called out Becky. I'm praying whatever it is that is a covenant that is sponsoring witchcraft in these families, I declare by the fire of the Holy Spirit, let it give way now. Let it give way now. Let it give way now. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. You will never, never, never return to this calamity again. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone, your brother is in jail. Your brother is in prison. This is what I'm seeing. Whether you are falling online or outside, please don't tell lies. Make sure that you understand what I'm saying. Don't just come and stand emotionally. Make sure that this is true. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Where is he? Where is your brother? He is in Sokoto. He is a Sokoto. soldier. Yes, sir. He's a soldier. Yes, sir. But he's in prison. Yes, sir. He is in Gadurum since six months ago. No, don't worry. I want to pray for you. Do you believe that God will bring him out? Yes, sir. I believe. You too, my friend? Yes, sir. My brother is in jail. The lady too? Yes, sir. Your brother, yes, sir. Father, you are a God of mercy. In as much as we do not truncate law and order, we know that in the realm of the spirit, mercy triumphs over judgment. Because you have revealed, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over these precious ones. Lord, they will come and stand on this altar and they will testify that you have been this good. In the name of Jesus, we introduce the mercy of God across systems and structures. And we pray, especially for those who were wrongly put in prison. I hope you know prison. A prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't judge anybody you see in prison. You may be talking about Joseph. The prison and the cross are two mysterious places. 
Anybody you see on the cross, don't judge because you may be talking about Jesus. There are people on the cross who are not dying for their sins. There are people in the prison who are not suffering for their sins. These are two mysterious places. When you see people in the prison and you see people on the cross, yours is to pray. Because three people were on the cross. Two were victims of their calamities, but one was there as a savior. There were many people, three people again were recorded in scripture. The wine presser, the baker, and Joseph. The two were there justly, but Joseph was there as a deliverer in the making. So the prison is a mysterious place. It's where both good and bad people meet. But I'm praying for you because God has brought you out here. Let the power of the Holy Spirit, I use you as a point of contact to your loved ones. Every power that is bringing this satanic oppression over this family, let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone from January till now, you have lost three jobs. You got three jobs and you lost all the jobs. Three jobs and all of them have left. I'm not talking of something that somebody said, come and manage. You got a job and you still lost it. Three, what I'm seeing in the spirit. I want to pray for you and I'm using you to pray for every other person. What is the spirit that makes you lose things? That when good things enter your hand, they don't stay. Can I pray for you, Koinonia? In the name of Jesus Christ. You got three jobs and lost them in Abuja here. What was the last job? Last month, sir. Where? In Abuja, Jabi here, sir. What job was that? Driving job, sir. Driving? Well, I'm a BSC holder, sir. But you are a BSC you're holder. You're a BSC holder. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Um, the most important thing is that God lifts you. There is nothing that is done with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Are we together now? It is better to drive with honor, even if you're a graduate, than to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And let me say this here. Anybody who wants to come around your family, this onslaught, I'm going to be praying some serious prayers. Kidnapping and asking people to bring ransom. A family that is still trying to feed and they just come and pack someone and say, bring ransom, 10 million, 5 million, and they enter for some families. If they get into a debt of 2 million, that is a transgenerational debt. Because with the state of that family, even in 10 years, they will not be able to pay. And yet in one week, they, can, they have to cough out that money. I'm praying for you. Any programming of darkness to stop you and will lay you on the road or to come to your house, and kidnap people or cause trouble i call upon the god of vengeance in the name of jesus may he visit the wicked may he visit the wicked for those of you who are in front here i stretch my hands towards you and in the name of jesus the son of the living god i decree and declare you had jobs and you lost when God gives, he retains, he keeps. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. For your shame, according to scripture, receive double. For your shame, oh, I release grace on you. Receive double in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone say after me, Father. Shout it, say, Father. Let my portion in life and destiny locate me now. Go ahead and pray. Let my portion. God is a God of portions. Please open your mouth and pray. Let my portion. That allotment for me in life and destiny. Extend that prayer to your children. Let my portion in life. Let my portion in destiny locate me. Let my portion in life. My portion in destiny locate me. Someone pray. In your prayer is your miracle. In your prayer is your miracle. Let my portion. Let my portion locate me by the spirit of grace. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Hear me. God is a God of portions. That means it is never God's idea for you to be a slave under someone forever. You can start and learn 
but eventually God gives you your space. It's called Rehoboth. God has given us. And this also means territorial establishment. Are we together now? Yes. For a time period, you are allowed to stay in a place that is not your own. But with time, when the God of portion visits you, this is what happened to Jacob. Jacob was in the house of Laban. It was not supposed to be forever, but Laban used divination and found out that Joseph had been that um, Jacob. It was because of Jacob's presence he was increasing, and he refused to let Jacob go, change wives, did all change his wages, and kept that man for over twenty years. Anybody coming in the spirit of Laban to not allow you have your space in life and destiny. Stopping that word Rehoboth from becoming your reality. You dig a well and the Philistines come to cover it. You dig a well and they come to cover it. May my God give you your space. In life, in destiny, in your home, in your business. I say it again, the God of portions. May he give you your own space. Do you believe this prayer? Now look at me please. When Jesus was about to have what we call the triumphant entry, the Bible tells us that he sent his disciples. He said, go to a street whose roads divide. Watch this. You will see a colt tied there that no man, including the owner, had ridden on. There are people who are caretakers of certain things. It is not for them. It was supposed to pass through them. But the spirit of Laban says it will not pass. It will remain. I pray for you. Harakos kiataba. Anyone carrying any colt that you should use for your triumphant entry. Triumphant entry in business, in marriage, in family, in ministry. And is refusing to allow that colt get to you. I pray for you. May it be released now. May it be released now. Go to a street, whose, a road whose streets divide, and you will see a cold. There are monies God gave men that is not for them. He made them prosper unusually in the business, not because of their transactional prowess. He knew that somebody... There are people today who have built properties, they don't know why. That property is not just claiming people's things. This is not what I'm saying. Listen, please look up. Let me teach you something. There are two ways God blesses people. He blesses people by making you Abraham. Or he blesses you by making you Lot. Are we together? Not everyone will receive the mandate directly from God. But everyone can be the partaker of the mandate. If you are Lot and you are trying to prosper by being Abraham, you will die hungry. God called Abraham, but Lord said, I can still partake of it. Are we together now? So you need to know whether you are Abraham or Lot. If you are Abraham, your mandate is to be faithful with what you have received because there is a Lot who is at the mercy of your obedience. If you are Lot, you must discern so that you do not break the relationship with Abraham because your prosperity is tied to your discernment. The first decision Lot took outside of Abraham's influence landed him in Sodom and Gomorrah. That means his prosperity was not a function of his wisdom. He was under a grace of Abraham. Hear what I'm telling you. There are many of you who, if God is to allow you learn all the business principles by yourself and start prospering, it may be till 20, 30 before you prosper. But he brings you after the order of Lot. It is one of the ways he redeems time by giving men favor. Because it takes time to learn the genuine secrets that produce lasting wealth. And the truth is that there are people who have gotten born again late before they now begin to learn these principles. A woman of 70 years, where is she going to learn 25 principles for prosperity? She's made the mistake she did not maximize destiny. But is God still a God of mercy? So God will bring Abraham to her. 
and she needs to have the wisdom of Lot. If you are Abraham, I am telling you, be faithful in hearing God because Lot, there are many lots that are depending on your obedience. But if you are Lot, swallow your pride and honor Abraham because if you fight with Abraham, that is the end of your prosperity. The same Abraham that fought with Lot was the one who had to come and save Lot. And even in doing that, he lost his wife. You know what it means to lose your wife? The basis for your productivity. Pharaoh said, let the men go, but the women and children should remain. That means the men would die of old age, of natural cause, and there would not be transgenerational, there would not be continuity. Are we together? Please listen to what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you prophetically. There are some of you right now, by the mercy of God, and because of the covenant God had with your parents, instead of taking 10 years to start learning the principles, the truth is that time has gone. You already have five children. Before you learn all the rudiments, so what God does as an act of his mercy is he will let you hear when he's speaking to Abraham. As Abraham moves, you come as Lot provided you can be faithful a day will come you will not even know who God spoke to and who God or who is following the mistake do you know the trouble between Abraham and Lot started from their men not them their men train the people around you to know why the anointing is in your life so that they do not you don't lose the anointing and lose favor i don't know why the spirit of god is speaking this through me i'm speaking to the entire globe listen to me there are people right now the reason why you will lose favor is because of your children you have not taught your children that the church god planted you in is the reason why god is honoring them and you are watching them dishonor the vessel that god is using to lift you learn from lot remember lot's wife but remember lot too two of them have a story to tell are we together now know when you are abraham and know when you are lot not everybody will be abraham you can look onto abraham but not everybody will be abraham there are people today god has granted them an unusual grace they can sit down where they are every year. They can have opportunity to give up to 30 people jobs. And because of your relationship with them, out of those 30 slots, they will give you 3-3 three, three every year. Make sure you don't fight these kind of people. Because the day that happens, that it will be the day your child now just graduates from school and is ready for a job and that door is closed. I pray for someone, whatever has taken you away from the blessing of Abraham as Lot, may my God who is your God bring restoration. May my God who is your God bring restoration. And if you are Abraham, I'm praying for you the grace to stay until what God says manifest. May it happen for you. May that grace rest on you so that all the lots connected to you will not wait in vain because of your disobedience. And Lot went with him. That was the wisest thing Lot did. And Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. When it was time for God to help the Ethiopian eunuch, he encouraged the servant Philip. He said, join this chariot for the sake of the man. Join this chariot. If you leave this man alone, confusion will kill him. If you leave this man alone, he will never be saved. Join this chariot. Can I tell you? Beware of the people God brings in your life. There are destructive people I taught you, but there are people who are gifts. When you see other people joining your chariot, discern if it's God that has sent them there, respect their presence. It's not idleness that brought them. God sent them to your chariot so that you will understand the interpretation of what you are reading. You have opened the book of your destiny, but you cannot understand it. So God sends them to join the chariot. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I pray for the sick now? Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. Believe. Do you know, Reverend Sam, I got to find out that there are four 
I've discerned that there are four diseases that the devil is bringing to destroy people in the body of Christ. It didn't used to be an issue, but it, the church seems to be keeping quiet over it. And if we do not arise and pray, number one is called cancer. Cancer. Thank God for the research that is being done in medicine, but we need to pray and upgrade our levels of graces so that we can bring to end this, this demonic thing that is killing people. I know many people, sadly, who have died in the last two or three months because of this satanic thing. One time, I think it was a, some, maybe it's a few months ago, I was praying for people and then this beautiful young lady, seven years, this little girl, swollen by that devilish thing. You would think it is old people, but now seven years, what did the girl do? Satan for you. Cancer. Cancer. Number two that I want us to pray for is Satan is beginning to creep and he's fighting the next generation in the church and he's using the tool of infertility. Let me tell you the truth. I'm not a doctor, but there are many people who are all right. It is because of the coming of John that Elizabeth is suffering. It has nothing to do with Elizabeth. Even though later we know that it is God's plan so that John will come just shortly after Jesus and not be discouraged. But all the same, infertility. You will see somebody who is all right, wife all right. Are we together? Or she will take in and then here comes this demonic, satanic, familiar spirit. An encounter. And we think it does not matter. I don't want to, you see, territorial advancement and preserving the purposes of God is transgenerational. Every time Satan begins to fight continuity, there is a goal, there is an agenda. I speak in parables. It's important for you to be discerning. The next 10 years with this onslaught of infertility on the church is going to deplete the strength of believers to a point where we will go back to Egypt and become slaves. This thing is a strategy and we must pray. Number three, every madman Jesus saw in the Bible, he healed the person. There was one sickness Jesus did not tolerate. There were other sicknesses, some were healed, but madness was not one of it. To the point that Jesus crossed over to heal one person and return back, a madman in Gadara. This thing called mental health. It's creeping gradually in Nigeria. It's not too much. But in Europe, America, you see children and they tell you mental health. Someone can pick a, a, a knife, kill himself, kill the mother and begin to act. I mean, the stress that families, especially in Europe and US are going through because of mental health. You have four children and three of them are almost like madmen. You literally leave your destiny and you are focused at managing them. Every time you see distraction away from purpose, it is Satan's strategy. When the nation of Israel were serving the Lord, he said it is because they have straw. Stop giving them straw so that they will be busy looking for straw and they will not have the time to serve the Lord. This is number three. Are we together now? This is very important. The fourth one is not sickness per se like health but is the spirit of lack and poverty. And Satan is using the strategy of borrowing. For as long as I am alive, I will never watch the church of God go down economically. It doesn't matter what people say or do not say. It is part of the mandate to help God's people with dignity and integrity, correct the errors that are around the whole teaching on wealth that brings materialism but to help God's people for God's sake to be empowered. If an unbeliever is the one training your child because of lack, that child will serve the God of that unbeliever. There is only one reason, hear me believers, why Egypt goes to, I used to say one, but I found two reasons now. There is one, there are two reasons why Israel goes to Egypt. Number one is to learn wisdom and knowledge. Number two is hunger. Are we together? Genesis 42, 1 and 2. There was hunger and Jacob spoke to his sons. 
he saw that there was corn but the location was wrong there was supply he saw that there was money but the man who has that money is a cultist but i am hungry and my husband has five children my husband has six children and the cultist is saying come you will work with me you will bow to my god and you will earn a salary of two hundred thousand and church people are saying don't worry god is faithful love him anyhow and the person is getting into trouble give us verse one media verse one genesis 42 1 and now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt he said to his sons why do you look upon one another verse two i have heard that there is corn the only problem is that the location is not a good place get thee down theater and buy for us yes i know that the man sacrifices people but just go we are hungry i know that the money the man wants to give me as a man of god is blood money but what will i do if i don't collect it the church will not be built i know that you are not caught you still bring it the church needs to be empowered it has become a disease this thing called poverty for as long as I'm alive and for as long as God gives me the privilege of leadership over this ministry, I have vowed before God and it's my covenant to you that among many things that you must carry in this destiny is the grace to live a life of dignity and honor. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant at the expense of their economic empowerment. I'm committed to bringing the whole counsel of God. Among the five benefits of God is that he satisfied your mouth with good things so that your days are renewed, your youth is renewed. Let's pray for the sick now. You deserve the glory. Please lay your hands. And the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship. As I bless your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. As we lift our hands in worship, as we bless your holy name, for you are great. to pray for you you came here with someone who is sick you can lay hands on that person and we're honored to have I will always bless God for all the hospitals and the clinics that literally put these teachings during the miracle services for their patients there are literally clinics right now who are allowing either on screen or people using phones for their patients it's such an honor to be able to bring the healing power of Jesus to these places if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and I want you to believe in a healing Jesus remember part of the things available in this feast is his power to heal the Bible says the power of God was present to heal them but he only ended up healing one person I want to pray for you now believe believe only believe when I pray for you I'm going to give you instructions to check yourself when I say check yourself do it that if your neck could not move don't be afraid your feet could not move don't be afraid you came here with a walking aid don't be afraid your hands are unable to be lifted don't be afraid I will pray for you and let's see what God does tonight within the time that we have are you ready let's pray father in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we're here because we are believers we believe in the cross we believe in the blood of the eternal covenant that has brought eternal atonement for sin for sickness and Lord we pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm ministering to your people and to the nations 
many who are trusting God for all kinds of miracles in their bodies many of them holding death sentences this moment as medical reports many of them like the woman with the issue of blood they have spent their earnings they have spent their means of livelihood they have lost jobs because of ill health they've had many parts of their bodies deadened and weakened i'm praying right now oh god that you honor every word that comes from the lips of your servant therefore i pray every spirit my god that is the at the back of any disease any infirmity any health or mental distress i command that spirit to give way now i command that spirit to give way now in the name of jesus the son of the living god right now be healed i stretch my hands and i decree and declare your internal organs be healed now your heart be healed now brain tumors disappear now the lord is showing me someone you have a swelling at the back of your eye this is inside but it is affecting you in the name of jesus the power of god is healing you right now there's someone you have it is not a thyroid i don't know if it's a thyroid problem it's like goiter but um it's inside just inside within your neck and you are having a severe discomfort it's like some kind of ulcer some injury inside you feel the pain the power of god is touching you right now every heart problem be healed now Someone is going to shout loud right now under the anointing. In the name of Jesus. God is correcting something in the body of that person. This is what I'm seeing. Every liver problem be healed now. Every damaged kidney jack back to life now. I saw the same case that I want to mention now when I was ministering at yesterday in Asaba. I think it was yesterday, either Asaba or Lagos, I can't remember which. There's someone, you have a problem going to ease yourself, to urinate. It's like, it's like you cannot pass urine freely. I don't know what the name of the sickness is, but it just comes in droplets. You're not able and it's, it has severe pain. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is resting on you now. There's someone you are having severe ulcer severe ulcer there are wounds inside you and and i mean it you're going through all kinds of excruciating pain i decree and declare be healed now i'm seeing someone the lord is showing me something is a very interesting thing i'm seeing you go, you are going through severe pain almost like stomach cramps but this happens all the time always literally you cannot lie down i'm seeing you having to hold a pillow and just to lie on it in the name of jesus christ the power of god is touching you right now now every bone condition bone conditions you are not able to walk you are not able to lift up your hands in jesus name be healed now if you came with a neck collar or some bracelet around your neck or around your joints i decree and declare may the power of god touch you be healed now be healed now brain damage be healed now in the name of jesus sleep apnea be healed now in the name of jesus christ there's a disease called insomnia in the name of Jesus, be healed now. The Lord, a miracle has happened there. Look at this. Bring her out. We're still praying. Bring her out. A miracle has happened there. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. She's removed her neck collar. Give Jesus praise. Look at this. Look at this. 
Don't be distracted. We are still praying. Check them and make sure that let's pray. We are still praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'm praying for someone. I don't know what problem you are having around your rib, your, your um, what they call it now, um, your ribs. You feel severe pain. You are a sickler. This person, you are a sickler. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, be healed now. Be healed now. Now, um, please don't be embarrassed by the case I'm calling. There is someone, I'm seeing the Lord heal you. You are a lady. This is not just you lactating. What is coming out is not breast milk. This is something that is dangerous. I will not say more than that. But you are having a very serious situation. You need help right now. Because with what I'm seeing, that thing is degenerating. And it's almost something that we don't want to say anything negative. But in the name of Jesus, whoever that person is, let the power of God touch you right where you are. Every shoulder pain be healed now. You came here with any walking aid and you could not walk. You are not able to move your legs. I decree and declare that you begin to walk now. I decree and declare that you begin to walk now. Let life and strength surge to your body right now. In the name of Jesus. And seeing someone, you could not lift your hands just as I'm lifting it now. But in the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you. Now, whether I mention your case or not, for sake of time, be healed now. Outside, be healed now. All the other overflows, be healed now. Online, be healed now. I want you to check yourself now. Begin to do what you could not do. Begin to do what you could not do. There are miracles happening. The moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you, I'd like you to leave your seat right now. Let's take, even if it's two or three miracles, check yourself miracles are happening miracles are happening inside miracles are happening outside check your body bend over backwards lift your leg the moment you see that the power of god has touched you in fact the lord is showing me someone you are in the overflow outside when you came and sat down you could not see the screen clearly but as i'm speaking now i want you to look clearly you will see that the power of god has touched your right eye particularly your right eye, a miracle has happened to you. In the name of Jesus, let's celebrate them as they come. While that is happening, all the ushers, please bring for me the prayer requests very quickly. Check yourself. You find out that a miracle has happened. I know that our time is gone. I don't want you to sit back. Remember what I said about testimonies. Let's just have, even if it's two, three people, come. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Koinonia, is this how you celebrate miracles? Those who have received miracles from outside, please make your way to the front. Check yourself. Do what you could not do. People are coming. Are you celebrating what Jesus is doing? All right, begin to submit your prayer request too. We are doing all this at the same time. My God, Jesus is touching people. Um, there's someone you have a severe pain at the left side of your neck. I want you to check it now. It was even swollen. You will check and see that it's gone. Gone forever in the name of Jesus. Let's take two or three testimonies very quickly. Yes, are you ready? Who is ready? Anyone who is ready, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sorry, Mama was having this problem last year. And Mama was having what now? Neck problem. Neck problem. Year. Yes. Then, but today, she received her healing. She's she able to she, move her neck? Yes, she can move her healing. Can she hear me? Mama, yes. move your neck. Look at this. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at this. Mama she, is saying she hallelujah. Removed, Someone she should removed say amen. It herself. Oh, she, she was, removed she it removed herself. It herself. Uh, I removed Give it to her. Let her hold it. Let the devil see it. Mama, walk. Mama, go, walk. Let the devil see you. Move your neck. Oh, hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. My goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Mama, we pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will go back and tell everybody in your house that you encountered Jesus at Koinonia. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's celebrate her. Next person. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. 
I used to have this severe pain on my waist for more than two years now. More than two years? Yes, sir. Then there's another pain on my knee, such that standing up becomes very difficult. Sometimes, that of my waist, I have to walk like an old woman. Standing up, I have to act like an old woman, walk like this. And now, but now I'm very walk, free. even run. Ah! Oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Did they, oh, did they, oh, help me say, Oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Did they, oh, oh, God of signs, oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Hallelujah, we give Jesus praise. He will never return to you again in Jesus' name. Next person, please. Let's do justice to time very quickly. I yes, please. She gave her the knowledge of tonsillitis. She has had it for nine years. Tox let us speak. So I've had it for nine years. Nine years? Yes. Medically verified? Yes. I was even asked to do a surgery for it. And now? It turned on me. Immediately you said the word. It felt very light. I could not sing for long before. I can't shout for long. But now, like, it feels very light. There's no pain at all. Shout, Satan, you are a liar. Satan, you are a liar. Come on now. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. Next person. You gave a word of knowledge of someone who could not urinate. Now he has had severe pain in his mouth oh for my God. a very long time. Immediately you gave that word of knowledge, the pain disappeared. Have you gone to check yourself? Y yes, I, I do treat it. I treat it. Uh, but now, the pain does not left the time I treat it. I still feel the pain. But now... I've Completely. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, that satanic thing leaves you forever. Amen. Koinonia, are you celebrating miracles? Amen. Yes, go ahead. Next person. Okay, yes, sir. Please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, the lady you mentioned with um, sickle cell. Sam, can you help us, by... please? Let's, let's hear the testimony very quickly. Okay. Please make sure you are submitting your request. There are ushers with the baskets. How many of you are yet to submit your request? Please do so very quickly. Do so whilst you're listening. Yes, please. Go ahead. I'm the lady you mentioned with sickle cell and pain. You are the sickle cell lady. Yes, I'm Having pain. the pain. Yeah, the pain was diagnosed as... Um, Gallstone, kidney gallstone. Kidney gallstone. Yes. When you started the prayer, I felt the pain, but right now I can't feel it anymore. Completely. Check yourself. Check yourself. It's gone. Don't cry. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, Dideo. Manifest your power. Dideo. at me don't cry many of you may never know what it means to be a sickler number one and then to have these kinds of situations I'm praying for you not only that God has healed this but may he do a miracle on your genotype in the name of Jesus yes sir next person please very quickly very quickly sir, Apostle, a very fantastic testimony yes please sir you mentioned my dad case for as long as I've known him he can't pee without pain and difficulty for so as long as you Yes. Wow. So last week, he, I wanted to call him to send me money. He told me that he wants to buy a drug and it's over 100,000 because of his prostate uh, issue. Okay. So I now put him on speaker when you were praying. I said, Daddy, just... You put him on speaker? Yeah, I said, just hold the apostles about... And you mentioned this case, that there's someone that has difficulty. Yes. And immediately, I told him to check himself. He said he doesn't feel the pain anymore. That is gone. The centurion said, speak the word only. In the name of Jesus, we pray for all family members connected across the globe who are not here on site. The same power that is bringing miracles to people here, we extend the same to any nation, any region, any territory. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for your dad, his healing remains permanent forever. In Jesus' name. Next person, very quickly. Apostle. Yes. Three, four years, bloody vision healed. She's in the overflow, but immediately you declare that word, she fell under the anointing and she can see properly now. She can see? Yes, sir. Our two eyes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. What happened to you? Uh, you, you, you mentioned that. She's still under the anointing. Oh, she's under the anointing. When the person came, he was not able to see the screen very well. Yes. You, you know, are the lady. That, I should look at you. I should look at you now. That I will see that I can see you clearly. And I looked at the screen. It was sharp. And it like, was. Oh dear. 
Oh yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the God of wonders perfect this miracle. It will never, never return to you again. In Jesus' name. Yes, please, very quickly. Difficult, okay. Difficulty in hearing for over 25 years. Over 25 years. In let fact, him speak. He, he said that his wife told him that he's going to leave her because every time he talks to his wife, he always says, huh, huh, huh. Let, let him now, talk. Very, very quickly, sir. Yes. Sir. What happened to you? I can hear now. You can hear now? Yes. I like this man. Straight to the point. No beating about the bush. That's the most important thing. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare, come on, Koinonia, are you giving Jesus praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It will never return to you again. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Yes, Pastor Jakes, go ahead. So, Apostle, she was just healed of fibroid. Fibroid? She felt the pain. It was swollen. It How long, my dear? Um, it's getting to, I don't know, maybe two to three years. Though I saw you in, in my dream, was it last month? Yes. Now, what happened to you now? Now, I am okay. You are okay? Yes. yes. So you go to the, med make sure you go to the medical stand to confirm it. Yes. But we give Jesus praise for this miracle. Place your hand there. That devil leaves never to return again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So again, you guys are going to sing this song. Bro. I hope you are ready. Stop. I've been so stressed, I can't shout it, but we must sing it. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. Praise man. God. Uh, my mom, if I'm talking to my mom on phone, I have to repeat and repeat. Now I put her in, the, in, my, in my prayer. Your so mom? I, yes. Where is she? She's in Ogun State. Ogun State? Yes, sir. So after you said that, we should sit down with that. Anybody that has prayer testimony, yes. from her, I, I called her and I was telling her that, Mommy, I put you in prayer. Can you hear me now? She said she can hear. I can hear very well. I can hear. Praise my God. In the name of Jesus, that miracle becomes perfected forever by the power of the Holy Spirit. Next person, very quickly. Apostle. Okay, yeah. This is a 16-year-old girl. 16 year old. And she has been lactating for the past five months. Oh my God. What in the world is this one now? But God 16 just years. Her. Yes, sir. And the medical medically, let the doctor did. talk. Yes, so she told me that she has been lactating and she's been having breast pain. So I took her to the medical center and I expressed her breast. There was no pain and there was no discharge. Okay. Look at this. Let me see the lady. Don't be ashamed, my dear. 16 years. Look at how wicked the devil is. A small girl like this. Oh, God of signs and wonders. Save your redeemer. Come and manifest your power. Listen, you have manifested your power. What's your name? What's her name? Don't cry. My name is Gift. Gift? Yes. May you be a gift to our world. We bless you and we declare that satanic thing, whatever is wrong with your body that is resulting to that, you are healed forever. And you will go and excel in school. You'll be an exceptional child in the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus praise. Apostle, this is a lump of several miracles here, pain in the neck, Pain in the hand, pain in the chest. They are all healed all kinds by of, the power of God. Okay, all kinds of pain from your head to your toe. Whether it's head, back, once it is pain. In the name of Jesus, we give Jesus thanks for this supernatural manifestation. You are healed. It will never return again. Let's shout amen. amen. So, once I've mentioned your case, you can go back rejoicing in Jesus' name. Apostle, you gave a word of knowledge of someone with pain behind her eyes. Pain behind growth, your growth, eyes. Growth behind growth. the eyes. Let she us have it for five years. Okay, since 2021, I've been having pains behind my eyes. I yes. can't really see. I'm sensitive to light. So when I went to the doctor, they checked me and they said, there is a growth behind your eyes. Me, your pituitary gland is getting enlarged. And since then, I've been wearing glasses. I can't see natural artificial light. I'm always bringing water to my eyes. That's why I wear glasses. But I, I can't see any distance. But light is very sensitive to my eyes. But right now? But right now, I can't see any light. Do you feel any pain? Just a little in the name of eyes. Jesus, let that little go. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We give Jesus praise. Pastor Jake, you ready? Let's take from. Is he fine? Yes, sir. Something is wrong. The mic? Oh, dear. Okay, let's take one or two there. Who is ready now? 
Sir. Technical work on our mic. Yes. Stiffness in the neck. Let him speak. What's your name, sir? Apostle, my name is Frank Etuk. Yes, please. I came to this place with a stiff neck. I could not, if I want to talk to this sister now, I'll just do like this, I could not. But Apostle, look at this. Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. Come on, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. I, I Come and manifest like your presence. Gideo, Gideo. Yes. Sir. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. This is how you will go back. You will look left and look right and see blessings waiting for you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, go ahead. Is the mic working now? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, so this is my little brother. When he was two... How can you call him little? Say okay, younger brother. My, this boy is not little. My younger brother. Uh-huh. When he was two, we were playing. So, compass entered his right eye. Come again. When we were little, yes. we were playing. So compass. Co compass from Matset. Oh, compass from Matset. Yes. My and goodness. Entered his right eye. So he had to travel so for surgery and they changed his lens. So now, as you mentioned the case of someone that could not see from afar, that could not see you clearly. Yes. He said he can now see clearly. You can see me now. Look at this miracle. As a young man, compass from Matset hurt his eyes. He went for surgery, changed his lens. And right now, place your hand on your eyes. Let me pray for you. Father, this miracle remains permanent. Are you celebrating what Jesus is doing here tonight? In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Yes, please. Very quickly, next person, God bless you. Apostle, you mentioned that somebody that has a boy inside the eye is not outside. So I've had the problem for over 10 years now. And sometimes, pulse used to come from the inside of the eye. So when I came for the program, I, I was not seeing clearly. It seems as if they use white leather to cover my eyes. But when you mention the case, I hold my eye, the, the pen disappear, and I can see this side now. But before... Oh, you went, couldn't see this direction? Yes. My goodness. What do we tell Jesus for these kinds of things? <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over this, your lovely daughter. This miracle that has happened to her remains permanent forever. In the name of Jesus. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. When I came to church this morning, I had very painful sore throat. Yes. And I was feeling headache, like terrible headache. But immediately you prayed for us, everything just vanished. And Gone completely. Yes, I declare it remains permanent for you Amen. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, please. Apostle, as you ask us to shout scream jesus i was having a sore throat here and the pain it was so swollen so maybe i just mentioned jesus before i could realize everything disappeared now listen let me show you what god is saying through these miracles number one god is restoring vision yeah. number two god is restoring your voice yeah. your voice is where your relevance is when the devil fights your voice, he asks John, he says, who are you? He says, I'm the voice of one calling. Are we together? Number three, God is giving you the ability. Watch this now. He told Abraham, he says, look left, right, northwards, southwards, eastwards. God is broadening your horizon. These miracles are not just body miracles. They are also prophetic messages. That's why God is re-emphasizing again. Once I have spoken, but it's your responsibility to hear and hear again. Are we together? Yes. And right now it's gone. In the name of Jesus, it remains permanent for you. Let's see if we can have three or four. My goodness, we have to work Apostle, with time. Five years pain in the nails. Heal pain Let's in the nails. How long? Five years, sir. Five, five years. years. What couldn't you do? I couldn't bend. Even when I was walking on the stairs, this it was difficult. Was Try bending. bending. Go. Look at this. And he's tall, so it's not really very easy. I was shocked. I, I was shocked. I had to test it upstairs over and over, even on the stairs while coming down, just to be sure that it was gone. Jesus for you, sent with love from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, it remains permanent. Yes, please. The doctor has a testimony. Ah, doctor yourself. Yes. That's right. I took some medication last week and I started having gastritis. I was in so much pain and discomfort. I had to eat frequently. So I came to church with the pain. I was just coping. But when you were ministering, before you started praying, when you were talking about the four things that's happening to the church, while you were saying it, I was already under the anointing. And then when I, I 
got up, the pain is gone. It's gone. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. It remains permanent. Your healing in Jesus' name. Yes, please. The doctor will want to speak for this person. Please, very quickly. So she, she has a um, mystenia gravis diagnosed about three years ah. now. Doctors, doctors, doctors. We love you. You read well. What in the world does that mean? She, huh? She's unable, unable to raise her hands up. You mentioned that case, unable to raise her hands up. Oh, that is it? <laughs> that long thing? No, I'm, I'm joking. I mean, come on. It's good to be knowledgeable. <laughs> Did you hear the name? And then when you minister, she's now able to lift her hands, but she wants to speak for herself. Go ahead, one minute. In fact, uh, 10 seconds. Go the straight. The weakness is my general body. But when you asked me to lift my hand, I was able to lift it up to five times. My legs are still shaking, but I know that by God's grace, I'm Oh, your, your whole body? Yes, it's the whole body. This is her mother. Her mother is here. Oh, Mama, you're her mother? Yes, sir. Well, how has it been before now? So we went to hospital. They said she has mysteria gravis. So she has weakness of body. Oh, that thing the doctor mentioned. Yes, that was what the doctor said. But I know with God. That one In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. we decree and declare, Mama, I pray for both you and the daughter. Amen. Let the power of God rest on you. We bring perfection to this condition. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I'm praying for your waist there. Eh? Back pain. In Jesus' name. You are standing for your daughter, but I, I rebuke back pain. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. So, sir, we have one more testimony here. Okay. Then we, with, with your permission, okay, please, we don't pleasure. Online. Let's see. It's all right. It's don't be in a rush to go. There are, well, you can go if you want to, but we are going to speak over people this night. Yes, go ahead. It's all right. My name is Abba Gabriel. For the more, for more than five years now, I've been having pain in this, my right ear. So I couldn't hear clearly. But pain? When I, yes, pain in my right ear. So I couldn't hear clearly. But when Apostle was listing the menu of what you can achieve in the miracle service, that the power to heal is available here. Immediately, I just hear a pop on my ear and immediately I started hearing. That's it. In the name of Jesus, my friend, let the power of God touch you now, bringing you life perfection. It never returns again in Jesus' name. Yes, please. So we have these testimonies from those online. This is from Elisa from USA. I got healed of a right shoulder tear that causes pain for me over the year. I got healed right now. Apostle, you mentioned the shoulder case. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. You are watching. Your healing is permanent in Jesus' name. This is from Port Harcourt. This is from Joy in Port Harcourt. She says, God is good. I was already dozing off from trying to escape the stomach pain. I was having I was having while watching today's service apostle said you are supporting yourself with a pillow and your hands are on your stomach immediately I got healed glory in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. wherever you are Potter court healing comes for you yeah we have one more from someone watching from Abuja here the person says I want to return all glory to God for my supernatural healing. I had my baby via cesarean section two months ago. They said there's a back pain that comes with it and that I have to forbear. I refuse to bear. When apostle mentioned that we should check ourselves, I bent over and started checking myself and there is no pain whatsoever. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus praise. Okay, let's take two of there's about two or so because we're going to pray. There are lots of requests here. Go Our ahead. Our came in from Anabra. This Ma is a son. Okay. Difficulty in working for 10 years. 10 years. So the son had to travel home to go and bring her for this oh, service. He brought her here. Mama, let her speak. What happened? Or oh, the boy, whichever. Yeah, she has been having this leg pain for more than 10 years. And we've spent a lot of money in the hospital. Just last month, we finished treating it. Then she called me again that the thing has started. I even had it in my dream. You came all the way from the yeah, east. From, uh, yeah, today we arrived today. So why my come in? She couldn't work well. So, but immediately after the prayer, she, it was, she had a knock on her leg. So everything now sees, even her chest pain. So Mommy, she, look at me. Mama, walk. Look at this. Let me tell you the truth. Listen, let me teach you something. Results are very powerful. Honestly, results are very powerful. They have a unique ability to exalt the name of Jesus and to bring glory to the saints. I'm praying, Mama, in the name of Jesus, you will go back to the East 
and you will tell every one of them that Jesus is alive. And for the gentleman who brought your mother here, may God honor you and position destiny help us around your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can we take the final one? No pains in the neck, pains, pains in, the chest, in Jesus' eye name. Conditions healed. You are healed forever in Jesus' name. Everybody rise, please. Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands, everybody, by faith. That includes those watching online, watching from television. Go ahead. If there are still requests coming, please. This is our final miracle service for 2023. Not the final service, by the way. I hope you know that. We we'll announce for the final service. We still have about um, three weeks or thereabout. Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to speak over these requests. It's the most accurate representation of your desires. Remember what I told you? When your desires and expectations are defined, then you are able to receive. Someone is praying. I'll bow my knees as I pray, whilst you also pray right there. Go ahead and pray. Father, manifest your power over these requests. In the name of Jesus, thousands of requests from across the globe, we declare by the Spirit of the living God, Father, visit people, restoration. In the name of Jesus, financial upliftments fruitfulness sing that song one time for us while we pray in the spirit go ahead everybody you are praying Help me appreciate Reverend Sam. I will invite him to just come and speak over the requests and then he'll speak over our lives and then we'll wrap up. Give him a big God bless you. Give him a big God bless you. Give him a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Can we just stretch our hands in this direction over this request? Father, we thank you. You're the God that answers prayer. There are no impossibilities before you. We spread our hands over this request. And with the amen of the saints, we decree and declare, contentions over your promotion is over. When Apostle was praying, that was one of the things that I heard. And I want to decree again, Somebody due for the next office. Somebody, I saw, I saw about 71 offices vacant. And the Lord said the contention over your promotion is over. The contention over your promotion is over. The contention over your promotion is over. I hear in my spirit clearly the contention over your marriage is over. The contention over your marital settlement is over. I am hearing congratulations in your father's house. 
in 2024 there will be wedding back to back in 2024 there will be wedding back to back there's a family here three ladies are not married and the Lord said the door has just been open the door has just been open the door has just been open there is a family who thought you have thought this will be the year you will conceive and every attempt for conception did not happen the Lord said begin to rejoice because by this same time next year you shall have your baby to celebrate you will come on this altar by this same time next year to celebrate in the name of Jesus Apostle I'm hearing the door of the nations have just been opened for so many rejection is over rejection is over your visas are granted I see 74 of you scholarships have just been released it should be scholarship after scholarships your PhD is sorted out your master sorted out in the name of Jesus Christ when apostle was praying for you I saw chains falling and the Lord took me to Acts 16 the Bible says at midnight when Paul was praying the Bible said the chain of all the prisoners fell down and their doors were open at once and the Lord is saying concerning your request here doors are opened unto you now the door of your lifting has just been opened the door of your advancement has just been opened the door of a career change has just been opened the door of finances have just been opened the door of finances have just been opened you are coming out of debts you are paying off your debts the door of joy has just been opened for you the door of a turnaround has just been opened unto you every request represented here one after the other I decree back to back answers back to back answers back to back answers back to back answers you will return to testify on this altar in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know what family it is but the Lord said you have been crying to him because of premature death and the Lord said the door of premature death has just been closed in your family the door of premature death has just been closed in your family thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father we're giving the glory and the praise for this request we're giving the honor and the adoration for this request thank you for marriages thank you for children thank you for open doors thank you for turnarounds thank you for promotion there is a military officer here the Lord said your promotion has just been released We give you the praise and the glory. Let your name forever be praised. That the Lord just said I should declare this over some people here. I'm hearing the word finishing. Now listen, listen. There are people under the sound of my voice. You are, I'm seeing so many projects that have been started, but somewhere you got stuck and you couldn't. You got stalled. You just couldn't finish. And I'm hearing it's a pattern in the family. 
they start things they don't finish they start things they don't finish whosoever you are inside and outside the bible says and solomon finished the building and solomon completed the building with your hand upon your head and your amen so loud receive the finishing anointing with your hand upon your head and your amen so loud receive the finishing anointing receive the finishing anointing as I leave you I mean I'm just hearing apostle I'm hearing and David recovered all please I don't know your name I wish I can put your name there but for all these requests recover all recover lost time recover lost opportunity recover the years I can't count one more second recover the years the locals have taken on this altar we decree and declare recover all Hallelujah. Let's give Reverend Sam a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Just, just three prayers I need to speak over your life. If you brought any point of contact, lift it up now. I want to speak whether your documents, whether whatever. If there's nothing, just lift your hands. I want to pray for you. In the name that is above all names, I decree and I declare over your various points of contact inside and outside let an unction from heaven rest upon it and with these points of contact strange testimonies now strange testimonies now strange testimonies now in the name of jesus christ can i declare favor over you every door this is our year of open door every door that has been closed towards you by this mantle this grace you've heard the testimonies i pray for someone who is desperate to see the favor of god in your life beginning from tonight may favor start speaking may favor start speaking speaking in your office speaking in your home speaking in the morning speaking in the afternoon speaking in the night receive that grace in jesus name final prayer final prayer final prayer i want to pray the grace for encounters listen this is a spiritual house your prayer life your word study life your appetite for the things of the spirit it is important that it remains intact this is our major assignment therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus every prayer life that has gone down here you really want to pray and serve the lord but you find there is a weakness in your spirit you cannot explain right now fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh passion for the word receive it in the name of jesus christ and in the name of jesus i'm praying for you with your hands even these hands that are lifted the kinds of signs and wonders you have never seen happen through you i stretch my hands to those who believe in the name of jesus in this season may my god wrought signs and wonders through your hands Our time is up, but I'm led in my spirit to speak over your finances. Will that be a waste of your time? Mm. God helps men know this issue of finances. I want to pray for you. Every chain around your finances. With all humility, I tell you the truth. This is a ministry that God has helped. There is no reason why you should be part of this vision and then have yourself go down financially and in shame. I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Financial shame, financial limitation, debt borrowing, emotional stress because of finances. It comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. 
it comes to an end now. Receive supernatural favor. Open doors for your finances in the name of Jesus Christ. For someone, the financial blessing you have from now till the end of this service here, in the name of Jesus, between now and the end of Koinonia service for this year, from maybe the last five years put together, it will be that you have never received such favor. And I say it from my spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, may God raise men to bless you. May God raise strangers to bless you. May God raise friends to bless you. May God raise mentors to bless you. May God raise those you have raised to bless you. Hallelujah. Nothing dies in your hands. I prayed a prayer earlier on. Please let me pray for you. I place a mark on your head. Every spirit that wants you to be a victim of kidnappers, I say it again, or accidents, or to hear bad news that they kidnap someone and you should bring money. I'm praying, let a mark of exemption rest on your head. Rest on your family. Rest on your family and rest on your head in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Wave your hands to Jesus. Give him praise. January miracle service, February miracle service, March miracle service, April, May, June. Someone is waving. July, August, September, October, now November. If you witnessed it, I want you to give Jesus a shout. A shout, a shout, a shout. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, let me encourage you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to go back home and take an inventory of everything the Lord has done in your life. Write it and give him praise. Remember what I said about prophetic instructions. Find a day from today till Saturday. Choose any day. Just one hour. You and God. Choose any day. Don't ask. Don't beg. Don't do anything. Just write everything you know he has done for you in the course of the miracle service. And you can sing. You can dance. You alone with God. Let that put a seal to everything he's done. Everything he's already doing. And that which you will do. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Let me make an altar call right now. You need Jesus. He's the King of Kings, your Redeemer. The first benefit that Jesus, God, brings to all those who come to him is the forgiveness of sins. Let's minimize moving around so that we allow those who are answering this call. There are so many people outside, all the overflows. You need to come to Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. Run, literally. Leave your seat and run. There's no point cajoling. There's no point manipulating you. You have seen his power. And you're saying, Apostle, please lead me to Jesus before service is over. Is there someone bold and desperate enough? Come. Come. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Let's celebrate them as they come. You are worth the wait. You are worth our being patient. Two. The moment I count five, we begin to pray. If there are any persons coming from outside, let's make that very fast, please. Please clear the way for them if they are coming for the altar call. Three. Celebrate them, they are coming, Koinonia. Four. And finally, five. Please run. Join them very quickly. I want to begin to pray now. Thank you. Thank you for answering this call. And thank you for coming to Jesus, the Savior, the Lord, and the King. Please lift your right hand. Includes those outside. All the overflows also includes our global family from anywhere you're connecting. Pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Say it loud and clear. Lord Jesus, tonight... I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. 
I believe you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep those beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you so much for these precious people. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. They have come. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that upon the strength of their decision, they become bona fide recipients of your life. The grace to live the victorious Christian life, I release upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. And a big congratulations. Please may I request that you move to my right. Our counselors are ready to receive you. Have a word with you very quickly and you are back to your seats. Let's honor them. Koinonia, give them a big God bless you. Just a word very quickly and then you are back to your seat. Thank you. Hallelujah. One more time, I sincerely want to appreciate all those who have traveled from far and near. And I want to specially appreciate my uncle. My uncle is here all the way from the United Kingdom. <laughs> uncle Isaiah Ayok, please give him a big, big God bless you. God bless you, sir. Thank you again. Is this the best you can do for him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Our international family, thank you so much. So many of you, I'm told they are over... 85 registered international visitors who have come and that is aside those who just came on their own we welcome you we welcome you thank you so very much the lord bless you have you been blessed tonight please rise up on your feet any and all announcements as touching the remaining service and um, the services that are left and the activities that will follow would be communicated by next week so please um, do exercise patients. We'll give you all the details as far as the information leading to our final service is concerned. Just one quick announcement. The Public Relations Department, they are ready for, they are the department responsible for our international correspondence, is hereby opened for new members. Um, that's Abuja, the PR team in Abuja here. You want to be part of them, you submit a letter of application addressed to the head of department. You can submit via email um, to prkoinonia, prkoinonia as one word, at gmail.com. And they are also looking for people who are proficient um, in other languages, particularly French. Um, you can go ahead and apply. Application closes on the 10th of December, 2023. Kindly visit the PR desk after service, just at the back of the auditorium, and you will get all the advice and um, the notice that you would need or any other information you want to find out. Praise God. Just lift your hands in one minute and tell Jesus thank you. Father, we thank you for your grace one more time. To you be all the glory. We honor and we love you. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life that this week beginning, let it be a week of miracles for you. Shout amen. Let it be a week of signs and wonders. May the hand of God rest upon you. You go and return next week with testimonies to the glory of the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Together, let's share the goodness in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen.